Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob. I'm Mel. And we're here to play some Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. How's it going? How's it going? Um, yeah, we're playing game six, right? Game six. Last yep. episode was game four and five. Um, if you're looking for the previous games in this series, it is a campaign game. If this is the first one you clicked on, you found this on YouTube later. You're looking for the other... Uh, games that build up to this and kind of explaining how the game works check the, the video description down below expand it and in there you will find uh, a playlist link um to the playlist of all these episodes and future episodes should be there um but hello hello everybody hello to those joining live hello to you joining later hello hello um thank you to these folks supporting the channel thank you for clicking the join button down below thanks for all the super chats and whatnot um for those that are curious, uh, yes, we did just purchase the expansions for this game based on the people watching, based on your feedback, based on the buzz, the buzz in the community and, and the harassment. Uh, we did order the expansions for this game, so most likely we will play them on the channel. Probably like almost 100% certain we'll play them, but you never know. You never know. No promises, but thank you to the support from these people here, enabling us to buy those from our local game store. Um, and thank you for watching and clicking like and supporting the videos and stuff. Um, so yeah, so we're going to play more of it after we're done this series. I don't know if we'll finish the series today. It might take a couple more episodes. Maybe we'll never finish it. Maybe we'll get stuck on game six. Oh, Yogi says we might hate the game after game six. That's yeah. true, we could. Well, it's too late now. We ordered them. <laughs> so that's why also I have the disclaimer. I may not play those expansions. I purchased them. I probably can cancel my order after today. We'll see. Um, cause it probably won't ship yet cause it is a Saturday here. So I shouldn't, I should have a couple days before I can, uh, send an email to my local game store to say, cancel the order, cancel the order. Yeah. So if we really hate it after this one and we go, no, we're not playing anymore. Yeah. 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 So that's why I said I purchased them, but we'll probably play them almost 100% certain. So yeah, that can I'm all curious. change. Things change, right? Yep. It's live. We're playing blind. It's dynamic. We're having a good time. David says you should start with the charms and potions. Which was the first one to release? Okay. I, I don't know. Which one? Oh, I, if I I'm not sure. As a thing, I'd I'm not play, sure either. I'd probably play them in release order to try them out. Instead of playing like the best one first, like that, that you know, even though it came out later. Monsters was first? Okay. I'll probably, we'll probably try the monsters one first. As oh, but um, David says charms and potions makes the monster bo uh, monsters box the monsters better. So then I should, we should just put, just them, put them together? together? Did they both have like little hidden campaigns in them? I think the Monsters one does, right? That you can play like, when you first get it, you can play through a few more games, like continue the story kind of. Like you play them after you finish like game seven in this. Does the Charms have that too? Does the Charms have a little campaign to play that we should play separate first? Just to try Oh, they it. both have four box campaigns. Oh, okay. Okay. So we'll play those separate and then we can maybe mash them together after. I just want to try them as they're designed and intended, right? Yeah. The same way, like, I have to put myself in the mentality of, like, these are how they were designed. Somebody may just buy one of these. They may play them as the instructions tell them. And I want to experience it as you guys experienced it. You know, that's usually how I like doing it. Because I don't like recommending to people, like, yeah, you got to buy $200 worth of content for this game to make it the best. And then they might not even like it after playing once. Like, I, I don't think that's a good investment. I think... We need to really hold publishers accountable that they need to make proper core sets. And if the expansions are making not just to cash grab, they need to actually add something to the game and be value on their own. Not just like content that was removed from the base game to be sold later because they wanted a cheaper entry point. Which I understand the cheaper entry point thing. I do like that. I do like when there's a cheap way to get into the game for people to try it so they don't go all in before they find out they hate it. Um, so yeah, I just like to experience stuff like that. So then I can talk to it better when people ask me, you know, but I do appreciate the feedback saying, play it this way, Rob, it's the best way. Like I understand. Yeah. Cause I may only play it a handful of times. Right. So it's like, I'm busy. I got other stuff to play. So it's like, it makes sense. I do appreciate it very much. So, um, so a few things we're going to go over a couple comments that were left on last episode to answer some comments that I didn't really want to type out. Um, cause it would be long and winded and I figured being in video forum and people watching, uh, some people in the live chat can chime in. So some of the questions I answer, it, it, it'll be better if I answer them here and then, and feel free to throw in your two cents in the chat. And if you're watching later and you, you're like interested, make sure you open up the live chat archive and see what the chat's also saying. So you can get like 
you know, the hive mind, the different points of view. I like that stuff. Um, but we'll do that before we get in. Oh, Stacey says, hi, I'm driving home to watch this. I'll listen in my car until then. Okay, hopefully you drive get home safe. before we actually start playing and you can just listen to us chat for now. Yeah, yeah, drive safe. <laughs> but yes, drive safe. <laughs> yes, Matthew, save your questions for tomorrow for sure. Um, a shout out, I guess, to those watching live, the very small niche amount of you, I'm sure, that live in the U.S., or Canada, or have the means to fly from another country. Um, but Gen Con, our biggest board gaming convention in North America every year. Um, we're probably going this year again. We went last year, had a good time. We're planning already going. We always do that every year. We plan it no matter what. Yeah. But we don't always go. Sometimes we back out last minute, that kind of stuff, depending on what things are going on. Uh, also, depending on support on the channel, uh, I use money raised on the channel to fund our trips to conventions, to meet with publishers, to get footage, to grab games to vlog, whatever, just to, for more content purposes. Basically, it's like a business trip. Um, so I use funds raised from the channel, uh, you know, since we do this full time. Well, Mel does it part time. I do it full time. Uh, we appreciate your support. It goes into Gen Con. So this year, we learned from last year, we did a, a stream right before Gen Con and just talking about going, our experiences. People were asking questions. We were giving tips. What we knew, we were helping people out. People, it was like a good back and forth. People were giving us tips. Mm -hmm. It was a great two way conversation. Um, but then we realized some people it was like too late for them to plan the trip. So really Gen Con planning for most people starts in January. So for us, we're going to do a stream here in February before the hotel registration stuff opens. Badges just went on sale. No rush on that. Do not rush to get your badge. You don't need to. Um, but we'll answer questions like that. We'll discuss planning for Gen Con tomorrow in a live stream. So if you have any questions and you are going, come and check that out. If not, you can watch it later. It should only be a couple hours. Um, and you can get lots of goodies um, from there that we will just spill information. We have some information jotted from last year. We have some new information um, that we'll focus on. We'll focus on badges, hotels, and that kind of stuff. So if you have any Gen Con tips or questions, join us for that. We'll do another stream like that right before the event system goes live to help people understand how to navigate that. Also, we'll redo badges. We'll re-talk about hotels at that time because by then the system will be open. Um, there'll still be hotels left, I'm sure. And then we'll do another live stream about Gen Con probably like a month before, a couple weeks before. And then we'll have it locked in whether we're going. We'll still help if we're not going. We'll still talk about it, help people out. Um, so there should be three Gen Con streams like this. So if you can't make the first one with your questions, show up for the next one. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we're doing tomorrow. We're streaming that. That's why we're streaming this today. It just fit better for we need to do some research too and gather our thoughts. So we have some time tonight to do that. So that will get us prepared for tomorrow's stream. Um, but yeah, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss it. You can notify yourself on that stream if you want, and any stream on the channel. If you don't want to miss a stream, just go to our upcoming live streams at youtube.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table, all one word, and you can click notify me on any stream, and you should get the notifications as long as your YouTube notifications are turned on. Janet, thank you for the $10 super chat. Janet, thank you. For the Gen Con 2023 trip fund. Thank you she, so much. She just bought us lunch on our road trip. Oh, yes. thank you, Janet. Yes, we eat that cheap, Janet, for real. We do. Because <laughs> our, our priorities on Gen Con are board game purchases and event tickets and stuff. Yep. And then food and survival mm -hmm. are like down here. So yes. we, we cut costs like in this section, but we don't cut costs in this section. Correct. <laughs> that is correct. Hotel sleeping. Yep. Park bench. Park bench for the week. <laughs> sleeping on a park bench with newspaper as our blankets. Yes, if that equals buying more board games, yes. Yep. Yep, that sounds about right. That's, we we do yeah. do just above park bench, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes if the homeless people let us, we sleep in their tents with them. So that's <laughs> definitely a step up. It's definitely a step up. Sometimes they're very kind and, and accommodating. They like the Gen Con crowd. Baths in the parking lot. Yeah, there's puddles around. Yeah, there's some sinks at the local, uh, local White Castle. You know, <laughs> splash some water on the face, get ready for the day. <laughs> I just want to give a shout out to to uh, Token Bud says, "Oh, my first live watch. Welcome, welcome to your." Uh, first live I apologize stream. for anything you see. I apologize <laughs> if you feel after the stream your time was wasted. I can't get you that time back. So watch at your own risk, Token Bud. Watch at your own <laughs> welcome, risk. Welcome, welcome. Also says, "Almost purchased this yesterday, and now I really can't can see what it's about." This is the middle, so. Token. Spoilers. Yeah, token. But you'll definitely get a good idea of the more complete game today. Yeah. I assume it's going to add some more things to it. But 
Uh, this game is kind of cool. It, it slowly works you into it. So if you go back to the first stream in this series, go check the video description down below. There's a playlist link. You can find episode one. I recommend watching that because we literally start playing like from the first game and it's very slimmed down, less rules and very simplified to teach you the game. And it literally takes like three to four games of this, like three to four like boxes, like game boxes to work through before you get all the components of the game, introduce yourself, and then you're playing the full game, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, it definitely, if you want to see kind of how the game progresses, you'll see it over the, that first and second episode. But you can get a full idea of how the game flow works in the later games watching today, obviously. But this game might, if you're not into deck builders or medium weight board games, kind of like medium weight deck builders, I would say, this is still not medium weight. It's still like more on the lighter end, but it's less complex and you can play a less complex version by just playing those like with earlier game rules of like only having one bad guy out at a time or not using the dice or whatever you want, you know, take those cards out. Um, but yeah, definitely we explain more in those episodes today. We're just going to get into playing it. Mm -hmm. If you have questions, ask them. If we don't answer, I'm sure someone in the chat will answer. There's a bunch of people who've played this game way more than we have Oh, definitely in the chat that would love to help. I'm sure. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid to ask your questions, shoot them out, but spoiler-ish, because there are seven boxes with, like, surprise content. It's really just kind of trickling the content to you, so that it helps non-board gamers get into this kind of game. Um, but, but if you've seen the movies... Yeah, it's like the movie characters kind of, and yeah. stuff, and the bad guys from every movie. You're basically playing through all the Harry Potter books slash movies or whatever. Oh yeah, I guess books too, sorry. I'm assuming... I mean, it's got all the screen caps from the movie, so I guess we're really just playing through the movie. But. This just reminded me of something. When I was at the dentist this week, they were playing Harry Potter, the first one, on the, on the TV. Oh, that's while great. While I was getting my teeth cleaned. Thanks for that. <laughs> Thanks for that it useful just, it information, just Mel. Me. I, I forgot it. until right now. Hopefully that'll help in... Token Bud decide on purchasing the game. By... Well, I just wanted to say that that's what my dentist was playing. So your dentist is cool. We get it, Mel. That's great. How does that help anyone watching from Australia right now? Like... It just reminded me. Sorry. <laughs> useless information. It's all good. That's right. No Today good. in Mel's useless info. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I'm kidding. All right. Uh, what else did I want to say? You wanted to talk about the comments. Yeah, that. No, but before Oh, that, okay. Uh, but thank you again for the super chat, Janet. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes. No, I think all I had was the question stuff. Um, but yeah, today we're playing game six. Here's the plan. If you're watching this later, you can tell probably by the length of the video. But do we're doing, playing live right now, we don't know. We're definitely going to play game six. We know that. That's the next one in the series we're going to play. There is a game seven in the box. But you have to keep replaying a scenario unless you want to house rule your game, do whatever you want. Um, we're going to keep playing it until we beat it. I think that's how we're going to do it. So we could play two-ish games today, probably, is what's going to happen. Um, I'm not going to make any like goals or anything right now. We'll play at least one game, see how it goes first. Then we'll discuss, okay? Well, we'll probably have two playthroughs today, and it might just both be game six because we stink. Could be. Or the game randomly decided to snowball on us and just steamroll us over with some not fun market cards and... You know, the bad guys comboed up and they, they tag teamed us, you know, they, they, they saw what we did last game. They went back to the drawing board. The villains came up with a plan and they just outsmarted us. It happens. It happens. Um, but I want to address some questions or comments from the last episode. Super important. So Kevin Flood or Flood Kevin uh, says, hey, Kevin, thank you for the question or the comment. Uh, wished you lived in the U.S. Ha ha ha. Yes, because that is a joke. Oh, <laughs> I, I, no, no. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, I'm just being a Canadian troll. I love making fun of my family in the U.S. You guys, they're awesome. Our neighbors to the south. Love all you guys, most of you. Um, but yeah, U.S. is awesome. Again, we're talking about Gen Con. We travel the U.S. multiple times a year. Mm -hmm. um, but it's funny. He's ha ha. Um, doesn't stop me from buying things in the U.S. That's another thing. So you're like, ah, you can in the U.S. You can't get something from Amazon U.S. Yes, we can. We just pay through the nose to get it shipped here usually. Uh, and the conversion sucks. And the import fees suck. But there's, we were talking about Thunderstone Quest. We're talking about, I was saying, playing this Harry Potter game reminded me of a lot of the deck builders we played when we got into the hobby. I have a whole bunch still. I have some I've never played. 
I have some I haven't played in a long time. I have games like Architects of the West Kingdom, Raiders of the North Sea that I bring with us on cottage trips and stuff. Play them, love them, bring them, play them with family. I love those games. Easy to teach, beautiful production, small table presence, uh, just fun, fun gameplay, fun competitive gameplay. Beautiful worker placement games. Love those two games. They're they're my like go to now because they're nice small boxes kind of, and but they're big games and small boxes, but easy to teach, a uh, good length, all that. Those are like my go to deck builders for playing off stream. Is like Architects of West Kingdom, Raiders of the North Sea. Okay, but. I also played like Thunderstone Advance back in the day, uh, Lord of the Rings, a deck building game by Cryptozoic, uh, Clank, we've played Clank on the channel before. There's uh, Star Realms, Hero Realms, uh, I don't know, there's many, there's many, right? There's many that have deck building in them, uh, deck building mechanics in board games like Lost Runes of Arnak or uh, Dune Imperium. We played those on the channel, we'll play those again on the channel for sure because I have expansions staring at me in shrink wrap that I do want to open eventually when I find time. But this game has kind of sparked me wanting to play some lighter, not lighter, basically non-campaign 12 episodes long four hour play session games like this one, like Harry Potter. And it reminded me of Thunderstone and I mentioned that and somebody said, yeah, they always, I always get asked to play Thunderstone Quest. Rob, you love fantasy, you love deck building. You played Thunderstone and you like Thunderstone, but I haven't played Thunderstone in years. That was one of the first deck builders I played in the, when I got into the hobby 10 years, 10 plus years ago. But Thunderstone Quest always interested me. I was just going to buy it at retail. I never backed it on Kickstarter. I just want to buy a retail copy and try it. Every time I go to buy it, it's never in stock in Canada or in the stores I shop at, I should say. But when this was mentioned, I quickly looked up on Board Game Oracle in Canada and there was a reasonably priced copy collecting dust on a shelf in a board cam cafe I've never heard of few cities over, a couple hour drive away. I didn't make the drive because they had like $10 shipping. So I just said, oh, I'll buy the game. It's a good price and throw 10 bucks on it and just ship it to me. It's cheaper probably than the gas to drive there uh, at <laughs> today's prices. Um, so yes, I have a copy of Thunderstone Quest on the way. Uh, I finally tracked one down and, and it wasn't, sometimes I find it and it's like secondhand or it's like just marked up like 40% and stuff plus shipping. And I'm like, no, thanks. Uh, I just want a regular price copy, or I'll buy it used somewhere. But I, I never can find a used copy when I look for it either. Um, but yeah, so that's coming. That's coming. Okay, so if you're interested in that game, I know it's not, there is some house rule variants to make it solo. It's one of those games that came out pre-COVID, where they didn't respect the solo community yet, and realize how much money was sitting on the table if you leave that out in your base game. But there are some recently designed by other board game designers, actually. One of the designers on Uthia, um, one of the guys that worked on Uthia, he uh, came up with his own solo variant and posted on BGG. Oh. So we, we could try that maybe um, with just the base set, I think. But there is an expansion and a print and print on demand solo way to play Thunderstone Quest. But what I want to say is Mel and I are playing two player deck building right now. So we can easily slide. We can take Harry Potter and, you know, throw it on the floor and then <laughs> slide Thunderstone Quest right in front of us. And we can play it with the standard two player rules, right? Yeah. So if you're interested in fantasy like we are, generic... Generic ass fantasy. Uh, Thunderstone okay. Quest will be on the channel in the future. So subscribe and turn on your notifications, all that YouTube marketing lingo, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, if you were like, after this Harry Potter, I'm out of here. Well, now. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, if you were going to leave, you're like, I've had enough. After this, no more deck building with Robin Mel. <laughs> you know? But, yeah. but, you know, if you're like, maybe I'll see a different game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll play more of that. Yeah. But also more Harry Potter coming, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. So uh, we ordered that. That's going to be on the way unless I cancel it if today's playthrough sucks. And I hate the game. Well, I'll cancel that order too. But Thunderstone is coming, and I will give that a shot. Obviously, I have to play that at least once before I can say I don't want to play it ever again. Oh, just want to say, uh, Token Bud says, generic ass fantasy is what brought me here. <laughs> yes. Yes, I but love I like, that. I like to just warn people, you know. I, I love that. I love playing Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I love playing Game of Thrones. Those are my fantasy IPs, right? Yeah. But... But every now and then you get some generic D and D Tolkien ripoff Love fantasy, right? Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Love generic fantasy. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind. I just pick an elf. It's all good. In my, yeah, it doesn't matter. In, in my head, I'm playing Legolas. So, you know, yeah. like whatever. It's like I don't care. <laughs> I or, mean, or I, think Tamriel, we, Tamriel, I, I think we do that a lot, right? When we're playing generic games, we just give them um, like Lord of the Ring type names yeah, or yeah, Game yeah, of Thrones yeah. type Game names. Of Thrones things, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. yeah. But I'm just letting you guys know. It's basically <laughs> we're playing. A uh, deck builder on this kind of level, but like there's definitely way more cards going on in, in Thunderstone for sure. Okay, I'm excited. But it's still not too complicated or anything like that. Um, 
And then the next question, the more serious question, this is what I want to answer. I thought this was cool. I've kind of like throughout a stream, you guys know me, someone will bring up, you know, why are you complaining? Rob, cheer up. Why are you getting frustrated? And it's because I like, I want to win and I'm competitive. And I start bitching about game design things or when luck outweighs strategy and the game kind of gets out of control because it's something you couldn't even, there's nothing you could do about it. But we all know luck in games, there has to be some to add excitement, to add replayability, to add unpredictability. Mm -hmm. If the game was just a rigid, no luck system, you kind of could then learn the system and just game it every time, right? Um, there's then it no... would be a Euro game, no? Yeah. Uh, no, there's still <laughs> like, luck in that kind of stuff too, right? Based on what comes up and yeah. who grabs what and whatever. True. Um, but this was a good one. So this is the one I want chat to get involved too. Pascal, I don't think Pascal's here. Through, if that's how you say it. Pascal says, my girlfriend and I can't seem to be able to pass the fourth episode. Any tricks? Uh, usually if someone said I can't get past something, and I didn't, I should have asked for more details, but I just read this like today, and I was like, okay, I'll answer it in the next stream. Like today we'll talk about it. Because I don't want to type out like how to be better at deck builders, in my opinion. Of course, it's all my opinion. It doesn't apply to every deck builder. But here's what I came in and what I come to the table today even Here's what I've learned over 10 years of the plus of playing deck builders and any engine building in general, right? So in this game, in this game, okay, you have two sides. Here's how I break down deck builders, okay? Here's how I break down most games. If I'm like trying to understand a winning strategy in deck building simplified, you're building an engine. Your engine has to produce certain amount of resources when you're playing solo and you're worried about one character, maybe even two, maybe three, maybe four, maybe five, you can try to be generic and produce a little bit of every resource. But I don't think that's the best way to usually play games, especially when there's two or more people at the table. If you're playing by yourself with one character, you have to be generic. You are the only engine. But the cool part is when you're playing multiplayer, you can divide the resources that are needed to be produced, and depending on the game, there might only be one resource, two, three, four, five, whatever. Certain games will produce a certain amount of resources. So you have to look at what's the, the flow of the game, what resources are needed to win, who's producing what. So in this case, the villains, they're trying to beat the location, right? When the location deck's there, they're trying to control it, right? When they get enough control on there, they win. That's, they're producing two things, two resources they care about, I think, right? They are producing those little location control tokens, okay? Mm -hmm. Just think of it simplified. This is what they're producing. Their engine, this is what they're spitting out, okay? Like some engines we know in cars, they're producing, you know, force to move the car. They're also producing pollutants, you know, depending on type of engine, whatever, right? So in this case, these guys are producing location control tokens. They're also producing damage, okay? So damage here is a resource in the game, okay? Uh, I know it's going to be long-winded and everything, but hopefully this, I'm trying to be quick as I can. Um, but this will help more than just Pascal. I know this will help some people who may be struggling in general with engine building games, deck building games, Harry Potter, whatever. I'm trying to be generic as best I can. But in this game, we have the resources of our health, okay? We can add to that. The enemy can reduce it, right? So we're battling over that. But they are trying to race by producing their most important resource, is the location control tokens. They get enough of those on locations, they eventually win, okay? We need to produce attack to race them till we get through this deck and defeat them all. That's our win condition. So our most important thing, if you could only produce one resource, is obviously attack, okay? You need attack, you can't win without it, okay? They need location control tokens, they can't win without it, okay? We can slow them down by reducing those. They can slow us down by eliminating our health down to a stun. That slows us down, okay? So when you're building your engine, you could also produce uh, influence in this game to buy cards, okay? So if you're just thinking, I need attack, okay? Attack, that's my number one resource. But if I look at my deck, my engine, what's the max amount I can earn on a turn, right? You know, I have cards like this, okay? This is not guaranteed to produce me any attack. So it's kind of like I wouldn't even consider it an attack card. This one though is, okay? This is an attack card. So if I look at my deck, I have this one and this one. That's it. I am not winning the game with two attack. Maybe on a turn I can produce two, anywhere from zero to two, okay? So I need to, at, at the base level, most important priority in my mind, 
is whatever, produce whatever resource is my win condition. Maybe I'm the one only doing that. Maybe Mel needs to do that too. Maybe Mel doesn't need to do that at all. You need to work that out with the other players at the table. In this game though, I haven't seen any mechanics and there are some deck builders that have this, which is why I love them. There is deck builders like Aeon's End, where one player can literally be the player who's only buying things from the market because they could play a character that can buy stuff and somehow put it in your discard and, and get it into your deck. Mm -hmm. And you could be just the fighter and worry about the resource of attacking. You know, you could do crazy stuff like that. Or you can do a little bit of both. But obviously, if you're counting the turns in the game, you want to be producing the resource that gets you to the win on a faster rate, a faster clip than your opponent's. So if your opponents are producing, like, let's say one villain control token every three rounds, you know, and, and, and based on that, it'll take so many rounds to win. I don't know that math. I don't care. What I break it down is to just thinking on my turn. If I look at my engine and I'm only drawing five cards a turn, how much attack am I, am I creating or how much money? Because to get more attack in my deck, I need to buy cards. So there's like two levels to it. So you need money. So to produce money. I can produce money in my deck, but the most I can produce on a turn is like five, right? Maybe with, start, yeah. maybe with an ally and another card lining up, I might get an extra money or a player might give me a money. Okay. But you start looking at these cards and there's cards that get you money. There's cards that get you attack. There's cards that get you health, right? You need to prioritize. You need to produce on a turn more of the winning resource than and, and increasing your rate to the win condition faster than the opponent. That's all that matters. So then you work backwards, what will get me there? And what will get you there is you need to produce that resource faster. How are you gonna do that? By having the five piece of paper that you draw on a turn need to do more work. The odds of what you draw after you shuffle needs to produce resources at a higher level because these guys will start speeding up the amount they damage you, they'll start speeding up the amount, they start putting control tokens on there. There's a chance where they could tip it and really you know, pop your tire with a stun slow down your car and your engine's not really working when you have no tires, you know? And we can remove villain control tokens to pop their tires to really slow them down from speeding up, right? So you can stumble and you can, you can, um, uh, you know, uh, go one way, go the other kind of- Yeah, you can like pivot as you need to. Yeah, you can pivot, that's a good word, pivot, to, to a little bit here, a little bit there, but you have to stay focused. And the ultimate tip, this is all a long-winded way to get to the tip that really matters to you, and I know what you're doing wrong. This is what most people do wrong in deck building games. I see in the chat people doing it wrong because they're giving us... Oh, well, yeah, they're telling us to do it. They're telling us to do it. The number one mistake you can make in a deck building game is diluting your deck with pieces of paper from the good deck that are not better than what's in the deck. And the value, you need to start valuing cards. So if I look at this card, I gain an attack, I remove uh, a threat from the, a control from the location, right? I like this card. And this card's great. But here's the thing, the value of cards, just like the value of a stock in the stock market, is different each day. It's different at a certain point in the game based on what's happening, or based on what your opponent's generating, right? If Mel already has like three cards in her deck that are removing control from locations, right from the beginning of the game, she gets them really quick, and the opponents are never able to keep control on there, this card is not worth five money to me later in the game because it really only will generate one attack. Right. I already have cards in my deck that generate one attack. So why am I wasting five money to buy a card that's not giving me a better piece of paper in my deck, right? Right. So what's happening, what you're doing incorrect, what everyone does incorrect when they're first learning deck building games, you fall into the trap of, uh, I generated, you know, I generated a bunch of money on my turn. We're at turn 17 in the game. Yeah, you have like eight, nine, let's say, okay. 10 money. And you decide, your engine's running okay, but you decide, oh, I'm just gonna buy this, this three cost card and add it to my deck. And late in the game, you maybe see it, what? One more time, two more times, but what the card really does now is, let's say I have this card in my deck. You know, let's say he's an amazing card, okay? Maybe he's not, depends on what's going on, what your engine's <laughs> doing. I don't know. But let's say... Harry Potter Gandalf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your deck. Okay, that's, that's a good one. example. That's the best example. That's like edge case, but you'll get the point, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, let's say you have this card in your deck. You have Harry Potter Gandalf, Dumbledore, whatever, okay? He's an eight cost card. He's generating you with something of every resource. Even the resource of card draw isn't also in a resource, okay? For all heroes, everybody. For everybody in the game, okay? Who cares what he says? He's an amazing card. Mm -hmm. So let's say you get him in your deck, you work towards, you get him finally in your deck. And the next round, you start buying this, 
Okay, this oh, part's that's a bad, bad example. example. <laughs> but no, still, it's but not it, a bad example. But having it that with the other card is like a good, it, yeah. But you might not see it on you the same turn, especially if you've been the mistake of Goes buying cards. Point. Okay, you bought this one. Okay. Why would you buy this after getting a few good cards in your deck? You want to see those good cards more often because then your engine is, is running properly, right? Yeah, because the more times you can see that card, the better off you will be. Yeah. Yeah. So you're diluting your deck, you're, you're watering down your engine, your engine will not produce the high level of resources you need. So if you're saving up, so early in the game, a card like this, Arthur Weasley gains all heroes to money. Getting this guy in a deck early in the game, if you can do that, like one from one of the first turns in the game, the amount of money you'll get over the game is amazing. And it leads to getting the most important resource, attack. Because then you'll be able to afford like the more expensive cards like Dumbledore and whatever. You actually, those are attainable. But not all players at the table have to do that. So if you'll notice, my deck, all I care about is getting attack in my deck. And allies. And allies. Because I'm trying to lean into my engine and, and kind of do this so that I can be more efficient with this ability, right? And Mel might be the one to buy a few more cards that heal other players. Yes. So she worries about that resource, but not too much. And I try to worry about the location control as well and things like that so yep. that Rob can focus more on full big attacks yep. and I can try to do all the other little things. Yeah. But I need attack in my deck too, so I will try to get a little bit of attack because he can't win Gosh. just attacking himself. Make sure I don't shuffle all the Ron cards back in the deck. So it is like a balance, and we do usually kind of, when we start playing a deck builder, we kind of say, like, who is taking on what yeah and kind of so, build from there so mel will buy some attack You'll yeah see you, her. i need at to at some point she'll buy some so she's at least generating a little and i do like ones when i do buy an attack card i do like attack that does something else so i might buy i i like the um quidditch gear which is an attack and a health but Things also like again another variable to consider is what is the game giving you for abilities mm -hmm. do you have a card in your deck that gives you bonuses for buying spells Yes, okay. which I do. You should buy more spells. Do you have also cards and abilities in your deck that say, when you play a spell, do something cool? Okay, maybe you want to have more spells in your deck and less of other cards, because if you start putting other cards in your deck, that will dilute that engine of all these spell bonuses, okay? So there's lots of ways, basically, I'm trying to get to the point of stop diluting your deck. Stop buying cards. It is okay if you have eight resources on a turn, and I've tried to show that. I've tried to show that every single game we play on the channel, you'll see me going, I, I have all this money in a deck building and engine building game, but it does not make sense. There is literally nothing I could buy that will improve my engine to generate more whatever I'm trying to produce. All it will do is dilute my deck so I see my best cards less often. And if my best cards I'm seeing less often, then my opponents are generating their win condition. We are going to lose. It is a race. It is literally a drag race. Okay. I want to have my engine producing the best whatever torque, gasoline, force power, whatever. And not so much exhaust. And late in the game, if you bought too many money cards early in the game, that means all those money cards that come out late in the game, they're dead cards to you. Because there's nothing you could buy to make them better. And that's why in this game, not having the ability to trash cards makes me kind of cry a little bit. Because that's a beautiful thing in engine building games when the cards' values maybe don't drop as much because you can eliminate them from your deck later in the game. And I do love that. Like, go play Star Realms. It's like a super cheap deck building game in a box. Pascal, go, if you haven't played Star Realms or Hero Realms, go buy one of the cheap little boxes of it and play. They're super basic deck building games, but they have some of the like standard mechanics you should put in a deck building game, like trashing cards or removing cards from the market to, to get rid of those bad value clogging cards, right? Yeah. So then you can start really understanding the value of cards and changing cards. And if you put cards too early in your deck, you could buy a card later or do something to trash it out of your deck. And trashing out of your deck just gets it out of your engine. So again, a card that generates a lot of money, great early game, not so great late game, okay? Unless there's some way to, in this game, if they introduce like spending money for damage or something, which happens sometimes. Sometimes in games, they put bosses in there or enemies in there that one of the other resources you could heal an undead enemy. So us healing ourselves, maybe the value on heal cards goes up because now we can heal an, a vampire enemy and kill it or whatever, you know? Yeah. Like some games do that too. So you just have to value the resources in the game, produce them faster, and if every single card you look at in the market, you have to judge at that point in the game, at that turn, based on how your engine's going, or how your team's engines are going, 
Do I need anything from there? Will it improve the game? How many turns are left even? Will I even see that card? And is it worth if I drew that card three more times instead of drawing my best card in my deck three more times? You know, because it might happen. It will just make you see your other card less and may make you see that card more based on shuffles and draw and if there's only a handful of turns left, right? So that's how you, that's how you win these games. You just value the cards constantly changing like the stock market with stocks. You're evaluating how your deck's performing, what kind of resources it's giving you, how the, the, well, how the game is going. What, kind what, is, of, what are you lacking? What do you, what, well, what do you need? Or what do you need, and yeah. What, what do you have too much of? Because all the time, the value of each resource is changing, but there is still always attack will get you to the end, right? Yeah. Always attack will get you to the end in this game, at least. So you have to value all the resources, but it changes from turn to turn, right? If the enemy, we don't see villains that are damaging our health as much, maybe we healing cards all of a sudden go low in value. But maybe it's worth it to buy one now so that you see it later when it matters instead of trying to buy it when it's too late. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. But do you need more than one heal card in your deck? Like depends what? on how big your deck is. And it depends on the rate they're damaging you. Yeah. So, so you have to judge it based on the rate of resources you need roughly and stop buying garbage and diluting your engine, okay? And that's why people house rule this game because when the market gets stuck with cards that don't help you, early in the game, there's no money generating cards and you're having trouble buying some of the expensive cards. That's why I like games that have the deck building uh, you know, mechanic of being able to pitch cards from the market or spend an action or a gold or whatever to clear some cards from the market, you know? Um, because sometimes you can get clogged with cards that don't help you. But in this game, I think they designed that as part of the replayability. Sometimes the luck can just get out of, out of hand and you just are impossible to get the engine going because the tools aren't available to you to be faster than the villains. The villains always have their tools available. There's nothing blocking them up, right? Mm -hmm. Except for us. But if we can't find the tools to block them up, then then like it's it's out of control. Yep. So I don't know how many times Pascal you played. Feel free to leave comments down below later when you're watching. But yeah, feel free to look at the chat archive for any tips in there. But um, yeah, that's just how I look at deck building games, and that would help you with any engine building deck building game, any Euro game. I kind of sit down and do that as I play them a couple times. I kind of like. Okay, what resources are important? And I like testing those games too. If I play one game and I focus on this resource in a Euro game, can I get to the win? Or is that impossible? Yeah. Can I focus a little bit on everything and get to the win against the other players at the table or against the AI opponent or against the game or whatever? And maybe in this game you can do that when you're only fighting one boss at a time, but once they introduce two and yep. three bosses, having your deck just do a little bit of everything isn't enough. Yeah. So uh, that's hopefully that helps you. Stop buying garbage cards because you definitely are just. I bet you want to turn, you get your turn, and you're like a robot. You go through, you take your money, and then you look at the market and you go, I have three money. Oh, there's a three cost card, and you just buy it. But the card literally says it works with spells and you have no spells in your deck. Like, why are you buying that? Or the card literally gets you health, but you're not like losing any health yet. Or the card gets you like one attack. Or just one goal, one influence. Yeah. And it's, it's not really worth, it's the same at that point as your yeah. other spells you already have. It's gotta be worth it. And, and again, different points in the game, like a card that generates you two money at the beginning of the game, very well worth it. But again, one that generates you two money on turn 15, not as worth it. Right. Okay, Don't, stop buying it just because you have the money for it. Do not be afraid to take money from here and put it to here without touching paper here. Okay? Which we do quite a bit, yeah. and we make jokes like, okay, I'm just gonna dump this into the bin. Yeah, like I, I've been showing that through every yeah. game, is like, that is something you really need to do, start valuing each piece of paper based on the, the point in the game, like, you know? Yeah. The problem is this game, they give you all these starter cards, which are crap, and later in the game, they're dead cards. So already in a game, that's why I'm even more careful in this game, I only need a few great cards in the deck to make a good engine, because it's already super diluted, right? Obviously, you can go the mentality of if you do see amazing six and like if I'm playing with with Ron Weasley and I have these ally cards, these uh, I need an ally to get good stuff done, and I keep seeing four, five, six cost allies, and I keep buying them all game. Sometimes it just works out that way, and then I will dilute my crappy cards with so many good cards that these don't affect the math as much, you know, the odds as much. Yeah, and then you can just use these cards as your discard cards when it tells you to discard a Bingo. card because yeah. you don't need to discard one of your main cards because you have yep, these cards yep. as backup. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Hope that helps. Hopefully that helps you. Hopefully that gets you there. Just play and, and try not to buy a card every single turn and don't feel bad about it unless the card is going to help you with your engine and help you late game too.
Because some of them will punish you late game if you bought them early and they don't work with your engine or whatever. I also very much value draw in, in any deck building game, especially this game where you only draw five cards a turn, you can't hold cards. Oh yeah. So I like being able to get through my deck faster. So draw, I value really high, even though these guys block it a lot. Because if I can have seven or eight cards in my hand, now I'm increasing the chances of my resources and also increasing the amount of times I see the amazing pieces of paper I bought and put into my engine. I'm getting through my deck faster, which means I'm seeing them at a way faster rate than these guys are able to generate the resources. Mm -hmm. And that's why you see some games we literally win and they've got like no control on even the first location yep. because we just started plowing through our engine way faster than the designers intended because we just got lucky and got so much draw that we just overpowered the enemy. Mm -hmm. And I'm always trying to achieve that. I'm always trying to break the game and really soup up my engine to produce more resources than the enemy can handle. That's, that's the idea. Which I think you highly proved in uh, the uh, game five. Yeah. I was sure I don't remember but that was when you had like all your allies and you kept like drawing like yeah. 10 12 cards. But that's just the the, deck the way got, it worked. Like, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I got lucky and saw the pieces I need. Yeah. At the right times. You know. Yeah. You know, the problem too with this game is uh all that advice I gave is sometimes you have to buy a garbage card just a clear card. Just to get the, the cycle, next cards yeah. to draw up the deck early in the game. Someone may just have to bite it and buy a card that's kind of crappy. Which I have done in the past to, to, yeah. to clear out a card. I'm like, okay, this will work for what I have. It's not the best, but it will work. Like maybe it's a heal card or a spell for my deck, which will help maybe get something that Rob can use for attack. And there are house rules people have come up with. If you draw a duplicate card from this deck and it's already in the market, just pile them on top of each other. That way it keeps more cards coming off the market and you'll you'll get through the, the bottlenecks mm -hmm. um, and the clogs of, of the cards sometimes. Yeah. So, yeah. Hopefully that helps. Anyways. Let uh, us know. Yeah, let I'd us be know. Curious. Hopefully you watch this episode. <laughs> but even if not, hopefully it's but was that, somebody. Was that on episode one? Or was that on the last one? Just the last one. Okay, so then. Yeah, just it was left only a couple, yeah, yeah, three days ago left on the last episode. Okay. So I'm assuming they just watch later. Maybe we're not playing in their time zone or whatever. Right. Uh, Lodo Film Unlimited Media says that's actually in the rules in one of the expansions. Yeah. See, yeah. But that's that's the problem. That's why I'm saying it's a house rule because it's not in the base game rules. Most people don't even know what an expansion to a board game is who buy a Harry Potter Hogwarts deck building game at their local, uh, you know, Kmart. Okay, uh, their local uh, Toys R Us in the U.S. Or their local Sears. Mm -hmm. Cricket, Cricket, no. All these out-of-business big box stores. Um, but yeah. So yeah, it's a house rule. So to say it's in the rules is BS. That's just because you bought all the expansions, you know. That's don't, I don't want to ever tell someone buy the expansions to make the game better. If you can just house rule something super simple, uh, yeah. I don't like that when, uh, yeah, bad design is hidden behind a paywall. N not a fan. Not a fan. But yeah, that's cool that they came up with that. Those stores still exist? No, Heather, no. I was making that up. I think, I think Mart... Toys R Us is coming back, though, from what I heard. Is it not? In... Toys R Us is still in Canada because it was a separate company and they managed their but money better. But I thought it was coming but... back in the U.S. as well. Yeah, just the brand. They did. They brought oh, some okay. back. To, but there's just the brand. Someone bought the brand and then just... Oh, okay. Yeah, they're, they're in malls and stuff, but they're not really Toys R Us. It's just like... A toy store with the name on the store? Like, yeah. I don't know. Oh, it's in the FAQ for the base game, though. So it's not just a house rule. I think we did talk about this, and you mm. had mentioned why it's not printed in the rule book for the... Okay, so where is the... the? Can you pass me the rule book? Yeah. Does it have a link to the FAQ for for mom and son who bought the game and are playing so. on their kitchen table who don't know what an FAQ is or Board Game Geek is or... Yeah, see, that's a problem. Like, they added an FAQ, they added on Board Game Geek. People talk about it. it's in an yeah. expansion, but the generic it's a house rule. grandma who buys the game. I guarantee they put that rule in because fans explained and came up with the house rule and they went, oh crap, they're right. <laughs> we only play tested it two games and we didn't have that happen and we need to get the game out fast to make money and we forgot to play test it. Whoopsie. We still aren't playing with that rule, but. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's no link to the FAQ that I remember yep. reading. Yep, yep, yep. Hmm. And this is the latest printing. I don't see... Hey! 
You know, we learned this. And again, they've been printing this game for like, what, seven years or something? Why didn't they put it in this if it's in an FAQ? They couldn't just update the PDF before they sent it to the printer to print it at the factory again? I don't know. That seems uh, lame to me. So stop trying to cover up for the company and saying they came up with the rule. Yes. Stop it, guys. Stop it. It's, it's a bad thing. It needs to be corrected. Let's call it out. I right. do agree. They listened to people that were playing it and they added it. Yeah. But they only listen to the hardcores that actually bitch and know where to look and yeah. know where to scream on the internet. Exactly. They don't care about uh, Billy and his mommy who bought it, who want to play it. They don't care about fixing the PDF that they buy or adding up a slip of paper in there to say, check the FAQ online. You know, they don't care. It's I not didn't see the QR somebody. code either that I remember. Sometimes the link is in the QR code, but I don't remember seeing a QR code. Nope. Nope. Stop it, guys. You might have fun with the game and you're having a great time, but please. Stop trying to cover up for people's bad work. They just want to make money sometimes and they need to be called out, okay? We need the games to get better. We need people who are new to the hobby to have better experiences. So I'm calling it out. So yes, it's not a rule in the game. I own the game. I bought this copy a couple months ago. It's not in our copy. So stop. <laughs> it's a house rule, okay? And we're still not using that rule. Yeah. We're, we're trying it on hard mode, I guess. I guarantee <laughs> the amount of people who know what Board Game Geek is, know where to look for an FAQ, who play this game, is like 3% of the people who ever bought this game. Guaranteed. This is definitely mass market, Jimmy casual game, okay? Most people who buy this, they just play games at their kitchen table, they don't know about added fixed rules, they play it, they have some fun with it, they make up their own rules, or they just are, they get burned out by it because they're like, I don't understand this game, it's like, it sucks because it does this to us or whatever. And then they just don't go into board gaming. They just kind of go, ah, it's, or it plays like Monopoly or whatever. It's just like, you know, an old design. It's, you know, has some problems and they're okay with that. Mm -hmm. But we need them to play these games and like really understand that the modern board game hobby has elevated beyond the mass market kind of slap an IP on the box with some paper and plastic inside and get it to people. We don't care. We're on to the next one. Which I think proves yeah. the point here because Pascal, who is saying, We've been trying to beat scenario four or box four and cannot. And then sees it played here and asked the question, like, how can I beat this? Mm -hmm. Likely didn't go on BGG to see or to the FAQ to see, oh, if you just stack them or whatever other house rules people have come up with mm -hmm. to beat the game. Mm -hmm. Kind of proves your point. Yep. But yeah. But yes, they can add, I, there's multiple publishers that if they come up with something new, the fans point something out, they will do a new revision of the rule book. And in the next print run, they make sure that new rule book is in there with a couple extra examples, a couple extra FAQ entries, a link to their website, whatever's needed. Even just the line to say, go to boardgamegeek.com forward slash game rules forums. I've seen that before, which is even... Like Stolmeyer Games puts that in there. If you need any help, go check out. We answer questions on the rules forum if something comes up. Mm -hmm. But he, he they'll print newer ver revisions of the rulebook. Some some do that, and I appreciate that. How hard is that, right? You're, you're clicking the print again button with your Chinese factory. You can easily send. You sent a PDF the first time. Yeah. You can send another one, but they just don't want to spend the time to have the intern update the rulebook because they're worried about the next game. They just don't care, right? And we need to we need that to be improved. We need that to be better. Especially from USAopoly, like uh, they're they're no small, they're no small fish, right? So do better. Altrivia Lettuce says it's like a puzzle to beat the game with no house rules and it's fun, and then says no house rules, challenge accepted. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. We're that, just trying to beat it as the game intended. <laughs> yep. And if they want to keep printing the game without those new rules in there, we're gonna play the game and show it off that way. So if we're sitting here getting frustrated or we're scaring people away from the game because of the randomness, the the heavy the heavy luck possibility of really messing up your playthrough, then that's what we're going to show off. Because this is what they want to show off to the customer who picks the game up and puts it in their shopping cart. I, I can't help them out that way. Like, I'm sorry. This is what you sell. This is what we're going to show. But I mean, yeah. I enjoy it, so I'm fine. But I do appreciate people trying to help and like, you know, check the FAQ, play it this way. They try to spread the word, right? But like the company should spread the word, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. We got some stuff in box six. Are we ready for this? Oh, Edgar does say though, what if their IP contract, uh, they don't have the rights to update the rules? Is that a thing? 
Um, if they lost the rights to the game, they wouldn't be able to print the game. Uh, you know what? They, they might have to pay every time they send an inquiry okay. to the IP holder to approve a change. They need to do that then. Because especially in this case, they've sold enough copies of this game to profit off of it. They should spend some of that profit to improve the game. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. Like it is additional cost potentially. But to add something to the rule book, I highly doubt they'd have to get approval on that if it's not... If it's not changing... Well, it is kind of changing. It is changing kind of the game. But, but it, it's not changing... It, yeah. But it's not like they're changing the art or a character ability. To or make removing it, something yeah. or adding something. Yeah, to make a character look more evil than they are, more friendly based on an ability or something. Or, as Edward says, on the back of the rule book, I'm sure it doesn't take a lot to put a QR code to... Like their website where they have more information yep. or something. Yeah. I don't know. That's a good point. Mm. Anyways. All right. All right. Game six. To the game. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. Anything else? All right. We got the rules here. So in box six, they're giving us three location cards. Use only the game six locations. Stack in order. Okay. So I'll just show the first one here. We are starting off. We are just starting off drawing one dark arts card, which is great. Like it. I'm glad it's not two on the first card yet. I'm sure it'll get there. Maybe not. Hopefully not. But that will be out of control. Uh, what the hell are these? Uh, all right. Three <laughs> dark arts cards. Uh, that's these. Okay. Only three. Not bad. Because okay. the, it's huge. Yeah, it is huge. But let me see. I want to just quickly look. Uh, yeah, there's more of this card. I don't know if this one's in there. But, is that the uh, Mora More or yeah, whatever the Morse, it was? Morse Mordre is now has more odds of showing up. Okay. Ish. And we know that one of those like villains cares about it, right? Or something? Yep. So I'll give this to you to shuffle her up. Lord Voldemort, Lord Voldemort card. Oh. Okay, we have a new Voldemort. Oh. This replaces the Game 5 one that I have staring at me. Oh, no. Here. Well, here's old Voldemort. Active hero loses the health and discards a card. Okay, that's once he's revealed. You know, we, we win when we beat him. We can't damage him until everyone else is defeated. This one's 15 health instead of 10. Okay. Okay. We still Challenge win. Challenge accepted. Oh, he's rolling the Slytherin die. And it could make us lose health. Could make us add control to the location. Could heal the villains. And we all could discard a card. Oh, I don't like that. Okay. okay. I'm assuming that goes on the bottom. You want him peeking out? Yeah. He needs to be haunting us. This replaces the Game 5 Lord Voldemort card placed face up on the bottom of the villain stack. Done. Two villain cards. Shuffle the rest of the villain cards together. Stack them face down. Oh, we got uh, oh yeah, villain. there's new villains. We have two new villains going in. We'll just hide those in there for a surprise and see what happens. So even more villains added. So the gameplay is definitely lengthening. Unless they're giving us tools to speed up our attack generation. All they do is keep making every game longer, it feels like. Which is weird. Uh, Hogwarts cards. Uh, oh yeah, we need to reveal the top three villains face down. I forgot that part. Okay. So whenever you're ready, just face them up. And we'll look at them closely in a second. One of them is a new one. Hopefully we don't get the dual, dual Malfoy combo happening. No. Uh, Hogwarts cards. Shuffle all Hogwarts cards together. Reveal the top six cards. Oh, there's more Hogwarts cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten more cards being added to this deck. You don't need any more cards. But these cards are in there. Here's the problem. There's some cards in here that probably uh, increase our ability to defeat more of this crap. But the problem is they're being shuffled into this ginormous deck, which you may or may not see any of them in a game or be able to afford them. Um, but yeah. I'll just throw them in here and then Mel can shuffle away. Mm -hmm. There you go. Shuffle good. As long as you want. All right. Proficiency cards. This will replace the turn order card above your player board. 
Oh. Wait, but how am I supposed to remember the turn order? Well, maybe it's still got the turn order on it. Are they taking off the train wheels? No. No. Yeah. I think I think Yogi said like we're still in tutorial, so until game seven. <laughs> yeah. What the hell is going on? Proficiency cards. Oh, see next page. Sorry. Uh, hold on. Distribute the cards on the game board as shown. Oh yeah, we yeah. We'll do that when you're done shuffling. Oh yeah. So here we got prepare your hero. O L W. Owl, uh, results have arrived. Hero setup is similar to games three to five, but with the additional addition of your owl proficiency, choose one proficiency card for your hero, which will grant you special ability along with your hero card. Unless otherwise noted, the proficiency ability can only be used on your turn. Replace the turn order card above your player board with this new card. Oh, okay, well, okay. I don't know. I'm gonna keep. I'm it. gonna keep it to the side yeah. in case I need to reference I'm it. Def I like the picture of the train, though. It, it <laughs> makes me feel feel good as we play. Calms me down. Uh, okay. And then gameplay: take the same four steps as previous games. Reveal and resolve dark arts. Resolve villain abilities. Play Hogwarts cards. Take hero actions. End your turn. Same end of game conditions. Villains win if they get all the locations. Uh, and we win if we smack them all around and send them home crying. And that is all for the rules there. Okay. So let's take a look at some of these proficiency cards. Defense against the dark arts. Ability. Each time a dark arts card event or villain causes you to discard a card, gain a health, or gain an attack and a health, right? Mm -hmm. a defensive one, kind of. Transfiguration. Once per turn, you may discard an item. So search your deck for a card with a value of five or less and add it to your hand, then shuffle your deck. So that to me sounds amazing for engine building, right? So that gives me a way to get rid of these if, if I care. I don't even need to buy any new items, but later in the game when I feel like these aren't really playing well, and I, let's say me as Ron in the decks I've been building, if I just need to grab a card that draws me cards or an ally, I'm really dying for an ally that'll help me draw more cards and get my engine going. The ability to throw away one of these early game cards to get that happening seems like a l amazing. Okay, right away I'm like, man, this to me sounds awesome. It, it based on how I've been playing and what my deck I'm kind of going for. But again, it might not work out. But this, this, yes, I like. All right. So here's how they're helping us handle more villains. Right? They're giving us a little buff on our side, balance the game a little bit. Uh, divination, divination. I don't know. Each time you play an item, you may look at the top card of your deck and choose to leave it on top or discard it. Mm. I don't love this, but I, I mean, it's a good cycle. Yes. Discarding a card to get through your deck faster. It's kind of like drawing, but you don't get to actually use the card. But still, it digs you into the cards you purchased recently and play them more often in a game. But it's only when you're playing items. So it may only happen a couple times a game unless you start purposely buying items. But what if you're buying items just to do this ability? I don't think I would do that. Yeah, this, no. this one's okay. Yeah, it's been on your build. Yeah, you might have a character that starts with more items. That make, makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Charms proficiency. Once per turn, you may discard two spells. If you do, all heroes gain one money and draw a card. I, I mean, know. this is not the worst. One of the spells, if you're getting rid of one of your starter spells, will replace the yeah. money will replace it. So You'll, all you those complaints I had earlier of seeing these cards end game, which suck, all these money generating spells you start with in the deck that you seeing late in the game suck. This actually helps you late game just get rid of them and keep drawing and gaining more influence. Yeah, and maybe you don't want the influence, but it lets you draw a card. So again, like you said, yeah. you're just kind of cycling through your deck faster. I don't know. I'm not sure about this one. Yeah, I'm not sure about this one. It's very, uh, very luck-ish de dependent, depending on what's going on, I guess. I don't know. Potions. If you play at least one ally, item, and spell. Oh. So you have to have like have a, have a little bit of everything. Well, well rounded <laughs> deck, I guess. A little bit of everything. Oh. I don't know. I don't know about this either. These look like they're not intended to happen very often. If a hero gains three or more health on your turn, that hero draws a card. Uh, okay. Hero, hero gains if a hero could be turn. you. So you need to be the healer. 
healing somebody else. Or myself. If a hero. Yeah, okay, it it's yourself me. too, yeah. And you, yeah, you could just draw cards. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, that hero draws card, yeah. So if you're okay. a healer, this works for you. Okay. You have to make sure you have healing cards going. You know, uh, the other characters in this game, I'm sure, start with heals and stuff more. It's oh, they also say with Neville, because of your, when you attack, you can... No, Neville's a different character. Oh, Neville. Uh, History of Magic. Each time you acquire spell, this is like what oh, work this, with what this you're works doing. for me. Any one hero gains the money. Okay. This is amazing for so you. So let's put this to the side because I might take yeah, this. Yeah. Not done yet. There's still two more. Flying lessons. Once per turn, you may discard a. Uh, you may discard. Sorry, five influence. If you do, this is great late game. This, I was just gonna say that. Amazing late game. Yeah. So when you're just getting those turns generating influence instead of throwing them in here, like I said, you, you have a, a use for them unless there's no location control out. But late game. But by then you're like rocking it. Or a new location control card just got revealed and that kind of sucks. But Yeah, this is also good. This is just generally good. Yes. This is generally good. And the final one here is Arithmancy. Oh, this is fun. This is fun for you. Cards that let you roll a house die cost you one less to acquire. Each time you roll a die, you may choose to re-roll it once. Good for you because it makes your allies cost less. Because it's the allies you that are correct, give you that. Because now we have a lot of the allies that want to roll house dice, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, I see. And then you get the reroll. So if you are looking for something, you do get a second chance on it. The rerolls suck. Rolling dice. But suck. these dice are not bad. Like there's <laughs> always something good. I know. Like it's not like, you're, well, I mean. I know. I know. I yeah. Know, sometimes I know. it'll say heal, but you're full or whatever. But again, but, with the conversation we had earlier, rolling this on the die in late game is not what you want to see. That's literally a blank. Right. So, no, not every result is good, you know? But they're not punishing it. Or least. seeing this on a turn when you got stunned or you already have full health, okay? True. There are some blanks on the dice depending on what's happening in the game. So the dice aren't always good. Stop saying that, Mel. Stop. It's not fine. The glass is not half full. Stop. Why I say that? This is the only one that matters. <laughs> or, or the attack. Or this, okay? These are the ones I'm always looking for every single time. Sometimes a little heal might be what stops you from being stunned the next turn. But don't bet on it rolling that. No, I wouldn't bet on it. I just say that there's no negative effects. Like, yes, you may not benefit from the effect you get if you can't heal or you're stunned or you don't need the money or the influence, excuse me. But there's no bad things. It's not like add a location token or something happens. I think I'm torn between two. Yeah. Okay. So here's the ones I would say you should look at, but again, you can Let pick whatever you. you want. But based on what I've seen you doing, buying oh, spells, I was, spells on the top. Okay. I was also thinking about the spend five to remove a location control token. Oh, I put that on mine too. Okay. Then. Uh, as one we should talk about. But yeah, I, yeah it, it just anybody could take that one. It's still yeah. good. Okay. Um, so, Mel, out of those three, then, which one would you pick? Feel free to yell out in the chat what you would choose uh, one, two, or three. I could do a poll, but it's fine. You choose what you want for this game. Maybe we do a poll next one. We'll see. We're just taking one for a spin here. And if we lose, we can swap them up and try another one too, right? So I'm kind of thinking of the first two. I'm not really thinking three because, again, late game. I'm not maybe purchasing spells, so I'm not getting the benefit from that. But the first two... I think the bottom one is the best early game. If you get that and you're just buying spells anyway... You could be giving me another money that lets me buy, like, that gives us the chance of getting Dumbledore possibly yes. in a game where we couldn't. Yes. Like, every little extra money. But it's only when throw. I acquire a spell. Yeah, in early game, I watch you buy spell after spell every single turn. So just think if you buy five spells only, early game, that's five extra money you've generated, which might allow you to buy a better spell next turn, or, you know, buy a better spell even that turn, or buy a, a, a second card instead on the early turn. You're right. You know, sometimes you're like, oh, there's a three cost and a two cost, but only have four money. Well, buy the spell first, you get the money. Boom, now you can afford that other card. I don't know. So, I, okay, you're right. So, me talking this out, the well, bottom card definitely is good early game. Yeah. The middle card, number two, is definitely good uh, mid to late game, like once I'm done purchasing cards. Um, but even so, there's early turns where you have all those cheap money spells, and you're like, oh, I only need four. I have an extra. Yeah. You toss two of those away, you'll still gain one money back right, right. to pay for the one you threw away, two, one of the two you threw away, and you draw another card which could draw you into something else that then helps you 
and it still gives you one and draws we all yeah, we both draw a card so i'm kind of leaning to that number two for that reason of the card draw but it's good early game is what i'm saying you just said it's only good late game. no i mean i, I think that's really good early game too it is it is or or what happens when you only draw two money cards two of those early money spells and it doesn't buy you anything or you don't want to buy a two cost card you just throw it away you draw a new one, I draw one, and I get extra money, so my turn maybe is better too, right? And yeah, you just get a money to replace it, but you're just tossing two cards that literally do nothing for you, yeah. and you're possibly drawing into a card you bought a couple turns ago. Yeah. Maybe. It's a gamble, but it does cycle. Yeah, it does cycle. So you're drawing, like you're and you're getting to the cards. Yeah, you're getting to the cards you bought faster. Your engine is, is moving quicker. Okay, I choose two. Or the top one. Or the top one, but I think I'll choose two for this so one. The top one you'll be staring at for a while because early game when you I'm have not five spending money, five on that right away. Unless you're sitting there and there's nothing in the market that you want and I you just, have five money. The only thing I like the top one for is those situations where it's getting close and we don't have a card in our market that lets us remove and we maybe don't have any villains that are removing. And this just kind of gives me a option, but the problem is, is I won't be using this every turn or every other turn probably. So it will just sit there quite a bit. Mm. And then I'll feel like I had a wasted ability where at least the middle one, I'm going to go with number two. Number two? Yeah. No problemo. But I may, if we have to play again, I may take number yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. We'll, It'll depend yeah. on what happens here. I don't why mind we trying lose. a few. I think it's fun. <laughs> uh, so the two that I had here, and I could take this one too. That's like, I think a decent play also. How many times late game am I sitting there throwing seven money away, six money away? Yeah. Like, you know, sometimes we could just remove off the location, but sometimes we don't even have anything on location, so it'll still be useless. So this, it depends on if our market gives us some. Yeah. So the second one is once per turn, you may discard an item. Oh, you know what? We actually would have already seen the market at this point in setup, too. So, uh, oh. yeah. So, sorry. We're, okay, so we're it might change things. We are making choices without full information, which is not good, right? We're playing on hard mode. Okay, let's 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 populate our market first, which it did say in the setup steps to do that first, and then it gave us these cards to choose. So you might not even see any items. So why pick a card for items if you, like you have like barely any in your deck and you're not going to draw any? This case we saw items. So maybe some of these ones with items, and maybe these items are amazing. Maybe one of those ones that said items on them now become higher value, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So we have. Uh, the all heroes draw a card for four money. Love. Love it. Love that card. Uh, serious black, not joking around. Uh, two attack and one money. Six cost though. Amazing though. Yeah. But Anything that can generate more than one attack. But a little good. scary. To see a card like that early in the game for six means he's clogging up a slot probably until you can afford him. That's where these cards, like the one I was telling you, that could generate that extra money could be the difference between buying a six cost card in early game or not. Yep. And if you can buy a few six cost cards early in the game, you broke the game. Yeah, you're rolling at that point. Um, so yeah, any little trick. I, I mean, this one, great spell. Gain this Love one, this card. Like, this is a, a for four influence, great card, great to get in your deck early, because it's drawing you cards and gaining you attack. This is perfect early game. I love seeing that there. I already feel like we won. <laughs> Seriously. I know, I, I know. We have my, decent cards. I get one of those in my deck at early game. Our chances of winning just went through the roof. This one. Marauder's Map. Draw two cards. If you discard this, all heroes draw a card. I mean, you love these draw kind of cards. cards. Draw two cards. Yep, sure. Like, sure. Get me through my deck faster. See my awesome cards. We got the book. Pay for it to roll a die and maybe something happens. <laughs> or maybe it's a die. big letdown. Oh, we already won. Look. Polyjuice Potion. So if I can get Sirius Black and, this, and give him the juice. Yeah. We're rolling. We got this. Or you so what do you need? Ten? Or you? I know. Oh, I know some of you out nine. there. I know you know Peta. You know uh, the World Wildlife Fund and stuff won't like me saying this, but uh, if we can feed Pidgey Widgeon the juice, you know we can juice up our our owl. Uh, that is not bad, also. Okay, it's not bad, also. Okay, but I don't. Please don't give your pet owls the juice. This is only in a game, so feed them at your own risk, the juice. Do you think many people have a pet owl? Yeah, of course. Yeah? Of course. That's why I'm disclaiming this. Okay. I'm a fan of birds. And yeah, I wanna... but I just didn't think many people had pet owl. Yeah. We got a bunch of Harry Potter fans watching. I bet pet owl sales went through the roof oh. when this movie dropped. 
Also, uh, people buying pet dobbies, you know. What do to, I have? To, have? to, you know, take care of their homes. Oh, I have a cat. Or, or this fluffy thing. Who's a fluffy kitty? Can we trade? Can I, I don't like Crushing? owls either, no, actually. No, sorry. Well. sorry. Who has not a, a bird or a feline pet? I don't Anyone? know. Anyone? I don't know this stuff. What does Harry Potter have? He has an owl <sighs> too, doesn't he? So yeah, this whole item thing. So if I draw Polyjuice, let's say I have Polyjuice and I don't have an ally. Oh. I can just toss it to find an ally, worst case. Obviously I want to have the ally and Polyjuice together, but sometimes Polyjuice you draw and it's useless. Oh, thank you. Neville, Neville has the a toe. frog. Okay. <laughs> I don't love that either, but... <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, that's not a bad combo there. Or this one, cards that you roll a house die costs one less to acquire. Serious Black's not that. No, so yeah. It doesn't so it's apply not, to every ally like you were saying. Not every ally, but just I know that it is allies that give you the house die. And to be able to acquire them cheaper is good. Mm. It says, my gaming group puts the market from highest cost to lowest. That way we know where to look depending on how much money we have. You're saying every time I draw a card, <laughs> I have to sort this out? You're telling me to extend game time? No. If no. you have somebody that can just do I, it on the sorry. side. Stacy, sure. I appreciate the tip. I saw you mention that like a previous stream, uh, but it was while Mel was playing. I didn't want to interrupt her or something, but uh, yeah, if, no. if this was on my side, I would do it like while he was having yeah, his no. turns, but I know it's on the wrong people, side of the board. I know if you have OCD, I know this bothers you. I'm so sorry, <laughs> but that's not the way I'm playing the game. Um, but I do appreciate it. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, because then every turn you have to shuffle them all around. But here's the thing. If you're trying to make it so when you have three money, four money, whatever, you're only looking at the three and four money cards on the turn, you're playing wrong. Yeah. You need to literally be valuing every card and re-looking at what's in the market all the time so you know what you should be saving up for, what is possible down the road. Should I say, Mel, give me some money because I know there's a six cost card there that I would love to try to buy next turn. No, you should literally be looking at every single card all the time. You should not be hiding cards on a lower end that are more expensive, so you ignore them on your turn. That No, no, no. You, you need to look at every card all the time. Yeah, I look at the text yeah. of all the cards and then look so, at how much they so cost. So for me, the way I play, it doesn't solve anything for us. All it does is waste time as I draw a card. And I'm like, oh, hold on. Let me shove these up and put this here. <laughs> but Stacy, play the game however you want. But I always give way too much information in my answers. That's why we're not doing it. Because I look at them all anyway. Yeah, you should same. be. You should be playing with all the information that's presented to you, making every single decision you, you can. Uh, but I may take the game way too serious. That's also a problem on my end. So just keep that in mind. Mm, man. Too many options. Like he says, I hug my owl to reduce my anxiety when Rob tells me that I'm playing it wrong. <laughs> when I say you're playing it wrong, I don't mean you're really playing it wrong. I just mean you're not playing it the way I think it should be played. So I'm joking at like, I'm better than you, but I'm not. I know I'm not. So just keep that in mind. I'm being a troll, okay? Don't take me too seriously. Please know we're the same as you. We just put a camera on. Yes, I'm a sarcastic <laughs> ass. Please, I hope you understand by now. I take that for granted sometimes that people might not realize that. Are you thinking this one? This is good, like just being able to search your deck. But it's only a five or less. It's also only the deck. So if your discard pile is huge and you have only two cards left in your deck, it might miss. Yeah. But I do like this a lot. Actually, or this one. I want one of these two. I think. Oh, just to be able to cycle through? There's also this too. We discard cards a lot, or I choose just to oh, leave yeah. health instead. Yeah. But if I just choose to get rid of a card every time we're presented with the option, I'm at least healing up and get generating attack. So it's like... I didn't get a card discarded, kind of, 
because basically in my mind, it's the card I discarded just made Generated these resources. Generated an attack and a health. Yeah, that's how I would think about it. They're all good in their way. I'm just trying, Which then to, I'm just trying to get the one that makes, like, fires the most times. Yeah, so and it's not just sitting there collecting dust. And Jeff says... Jeff uh, Jordan's here. Hey, how's it going? Oh, that's great with Neville. Okay, but it's also good, I think, for you because... Hands configuration. Is that one of the ones? Oh. Oh, he has more items or he likes to buy items? Oh, but I was thinking the one you just showed with the health and the attack is also good for your ability because the more attack you generate, the more heal you generate as well. So if you're discarding cards, generating attack from that, potentially generating heal, I don't know. It's a tough choice. They gave too many options. I think I want this one. Because I have items. And it, it gets a card out of my deck, possibly, a five or less, even if it's a starter card. I'm still getting it out of my deck, so I won't draw into it next turn. And I'm I'm getting through my deck faster, more cycles on my deck in the game. But I still have to discard an item, and sometimes I'll want to keep the item because it'll do something. But there are at least two items I want to buy, and one that could be a dead item in my hand, which has happened. I toss this, I just find another card that does something. Instead of this literally doing nothing. But will that happen many turns or not? I don't know. But even this card, if I could just pull this card out. Draw me two cards. So that's a five cost card I could grab from my deck. Oh, that combo works. No, isn't it discard? Yeah, so then you discard and then all heroes will draw a card. So that is like the perfect combo. Oh, yes. I see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I am choosing to discard, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. If you discard. Oh, yeah, because it doesn't say if the villain or anybody yeah. discards it. Oh, wow. So that's yes. like the combo. I forgot that that's a thing. All right, I'm taking this one, even though some of you might be like, no, that's for a different character. <laughs> I am just looking for value out of my card. It's a gamble, big gamble. It's situational. I'm relying on the item in my hand not doing enough. And me also having a card in my deck to draw. My deck's not empty, you know, but it does even so. If I have at least one card in my deck, I'm still cycling through my deck faster. And I'm down with that. Okay. That's what I'm trying. Might not be the best pick for Ron or the strategy I play, but that's what I'm trying first here. We can try, if we lose this one, we can try different abilities But if you're time. not sure and you want to play it safe, I would pick one of these two to not, to be more, I don't know, safe with the game. Like these two, I think, are the most generically just good to get us to the win. That, that should happen. Yeah, I do like both of them. They're just good around. But this one that I chose is more fun to me because I want to try to make it work. So it's the balance between like, could be broken, but could not be as situational, but it, it's and when it works, I'll be like, yeah, look at me. I'm so smart, but and it's so fun. <laughs> I, I fired off the combo like it's that, you know, it's that like people who build those decks go to tournaments that are just like combo -y decks that one in every 10 games that fires off and they feel great. Yeah, but it won't win you the tournament because it's not efficient and consistent. Right. Well, as long as it wins us this game, it's fine. Yeah, that's the thing. Right. We're we not get, at a tournament. Yeah, we so, are only so worried about this one specific. I, I got to stop playing like I'm trying to win a tournament. <laughs> we can reevaluate next game. Yes, I'm OK if we lose one. <laughs> Once. No, but I think looking at this, I think we have things right. under control All right. so far. Who's we going first? Yet. We probably want to review these. I don't know if it matters. Oh, oh, yeah. I guess we should. We have Tom Riddle. For each ally in hand, active hero chooses one. Lose two health or discard a card. Well, okay, I'll discard a card and then, you know. Nope. That's not the one I took. Yeah, sorry. This one would be the good answer to that. Yeah. Like, see, I forgot about these guys. We should have reviewed them before because this right here is like, oh, okay, sure, leave him there for me. I'll just be discarding and generating still until we get rid of him. But later in the game, that might not matter so much. But uh, Lucas, Lucius, sorry, Lucius Malfoy, each time uh, control is added to the location, remove, uh, basically healing everybody. He's the cultist. Get him out. Annoying. Uh, whoa! Yeah, this guy... Oh, we got our game six buddy here. Yeah. Heroes cannot gain health. But a reward, all heroes will gain three when he goes away, so we kind of wanted that when we've all lost health, and we want to beat him when we have stuff on the location. But the problem is, this guy says we can't remove tokens from the location, so if we beat this guy... We need guy to beat this guy first. He needs to go. But then we can't heal, so we'll... Yeah. No, we just need to get rid of this guy. Yeah. He also okay. gains us influence, which helps us early in the game to buy better cards and stuff. Yeah, so we need to get seven ASAP. Okay. Not a great villain lineup. Okay. 
Oh, it's what oh, we got. Yogi also says, oh, look at those villains. Ah, oh, you've lost. Okay, should we just scoop? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Chalk it up as a loss. Yeah, we'll just scoop now. No. No, we got this. We got this. Well, I don't know about that, but <laughs> now after seeing the villains, I, I'm, I'm with you. Do you want to reassess and change anything you've taken? No, I don't care. Okay. I just want to play. Okay. Do you want to go first then, so, so you can start? Sure. Unless you have a way to get me money. Well, right let me away. just see what I have. I can give you, I can give you money. Yeah, I have four. You can give me money. Yes, yeah, no. I can spend four, and if I play four, any hero gains one. So I can give you one. I can also get this. Oh, you have the one discarding spells to generate money. No, no, no. This one here. No, I mean this. I'm reading. Oh. Because if you have the one that buys spells to generate money, also if you're about to buy spells. Oh no, I oh, okay. no, no no. I was just double checking. But I can spend these four on what I want. And then I can give one to you, so you would have. I would have five. Five, which then Unless you can buy. Unless they make us get rid of one, because I do have an ally. Well, I have an ally as well, but I just discard it. Oh, so I only have four. It's fine. Or I'll just lose two health. Okay, so yeah, I'll go first. Fine. Yeah. Okay. I just wish I'd get to six. So we're only drawing one. That's okay. Dark arts. Uh, this one we don't have to worry about the name of this one because that guy's not out yet. All heroes lose one health and add one control to the location. All right. Whoa. Okay. Each time controls added, we heal, but he nobody has heal. And then I do have an ally. I'm not going to discard it because I want the um, attack. So but you I will can just discard a card. Doesn't have to be the ally. I know, but I, I want these right? cards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to lose two health. Okay. Okay. And then cannot gain. Okay. So this one we will just play for the attack. And then I will play four influence. I will, with my ability, I will give you one. Uh, if you play four or more spells in a turn, anyone here can gain one influence. And then I'll spend four on... I'll buy this one first. Because it'll give me attack and draw. And then next I'll buy that one. For the all heroes draw. But I just want to get more attack in. And then we're going for that one first. Okay. Oh, game six oh. card. Felix Felicis? Felicis? Here's two. Eat this. Whoa, look at the seven cost, oh, man. Oh, I like it. Oh, look at that effect. Nice. I like that. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. All right, your turn. My turn? Dark Arts card. All right. All heroes choose one. Discard a spell or lose two health. I'll discard a spell. I'm going to lose two health. Okay. Uh, for each ally in hand, active hero chooses one, lose two health, or discard a card. I'm going to lose two health. This is scary. It's scary, yeah, because we can't heal, so we're probably going to get stunned. I know. Before we can kill this guy at least once. I know. But... Yeah, this guy's going to be a trouble. Do you want me to change where no. I... No. Okay. Because this guy will probably just clear it away anyway. We'll just try to race it then. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to generate four influence... I'm at five, and for five, I'm just going to buy this card, and then I'll play this one for the attack. Yogi, I could have risked it, but I was nervous, and I really wanted that four-cost card, and I knew that the way I had it positioned, I had that. Uh, we got Reparo, choose one, gain two money, or draw a card. That's great, because that's early good. game, you want money usually, and then late game, you're drawing cards which you want. So, mm -hmm. that's a great card to see early. Okay, you good? Uh, sure. Uh... A mentor's Kiss. Active hero loses two health, and all other heroes lose one. Whoa, yeah, we're gonna get stunned boom. hard. I have no allies, doesn't trigger, okay. So, here's a play where I can try it. I could discard these two. That's exactly the situation I said. But when I you have, just draw two but money. I have one, two, oh. three, possibly five, or I can. I have four, and you have one. But I did just buy that card, which was a spell. But it's not in your deck. No, but it will when I discard and I draw a card. I will have to shuffle my discard. Oh, this you're doing. Yes. Yeah, if Sorry. I do this, so yes. here's where I can risk it. Because worst case, I'll still have three, which is enough to buy this one. But buy first, so you actually shuffle it back around, and could possibly draw into it on the same turn. But Get it? if I don't, that lets me draw and I can buy a more expensive card. Because if I am able to pick this one. Pick one. Or, I mean, if I'm lucky enough and I draw that one. Well, why wouldn't you want more good cards you could draw into? I don't know. 
then I can buy a more expensive card is what I'm saying. Because mm. I'll have more options. Sure, sure. You do whatever. Whatever you do. I'm, oh, and if I'm... I buy a spell, it's going to go on top of my deck. So you could actually do that right now. Put it on top. And then that's the one you get. Which is also a draw And then that draw makes you card. draw. And then shuffles everything through. Okay, so I then know. I can try. You could do some I fun can try. stuff right here. So this will give me one. Spells I acquire go on top of my deck. This will give either me two or... Both of us won, but I need the two. Do whatever. So I have three. I'll spend the three on this one. Goes on top of my deck. Yeah. I will once per turn, I may discard two spells. If you do, all heroes gain one influence. Oh, man. And draw a card. Oh, so I got to shuffle. Whoops. Okay, while you're shuffling, mm -hmm. this is the card I drew. I'm going to draw a card, so I'm going to now shuffle. Nice. Now, have we, we've already passed this, so if I draw an ally now, I'm fine, right? Because we've already passed that step. Yeah, yeah, you do this, oh, okay. this, and then play your stuff. That's a separate step. Oh, it's gain one. Yeah, obviously more odds of drawing into those. You have 100 of them in your deck. Okay, and now I'm going to do nothing with these two. That's fine. And then... Oh. Another Reparo to replace the one you just purchased. The Mentor's Kiss. Active hero loses two health. All other heroes lose one. Wow. Yep. Uh, for each ally in hand, I have none. Uh, there's nothing, and I can't gain. Okay, great. All right, what can I do here that's going to help? Mm. This is the only card I bought already. Yeah, because you only had this. This is only your second turn. So, like, probably just drawing two is better than... Oh, no, we'll all get something. I don't know, I, I'm debating just doing this right now with this card. Yeah, because I don't really have anything. Yeah. But I could, hold on, for each ally played, you defeat a villain, that's not happening. Yeah, so once per turn, you may discard an item. And when I discard this, all heroes draw a card. And uh, to search your deck for a card of the value of five or less and add it to your hand, then shuffle your deck. I could just grab... Oh, hold on. Let me check my money situation. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Oh, we have one there. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Oh, seven. <laughs> shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Sorry, Sirius Black. You will have to wait a moment. This better card showed up. Uh, yeah, not getting an ally, this feels weird, but that's what I'll do. All right, um, gain one attack. Gain one influence. For each ally, play this turn. I didn't play any, okay. One, two, three, four, five monies. So we're at seven. I'm gonna buy this item. I don't know what's wrong with me, why I'm buying items, but I'm buying items. I mean, that's a good item. Okay. Uh, only generate one attack though. I was debating getting the owl because the owl would have done an attack as well but as I can't gain health from his ability. So like, but it could I could have got three damage on this guy. So that could bite us later. But I can don't know. try to do one damage. Draw. He's gonna. I know that. Uh, he's gonna heal. I feel like it's coming. Uh, this. Mm -hmm. Crystal ball. Draw two cards and discard any one card. Okay, that's a cool card. I like it. Oh, we got to roll the die. Okay, so we're rolling the green die and seeing what happens. All heroes lose one health. Oh, no. Are you oh, stunned? Okay. Not yet. Okay. Uh, each Ooh. ally in hand, I have one ally. I will lose two. I want to play him. And then that and that. Okay. It's going to generate an attack. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to do my ability. I'm going to discard two spells. Each hero gains one influence and draws a card. That's you as well. Oh. Ah, Man, we mind. busted this game for sure. Okay, then I'm going to spend <laughs> do four spells for four. One, we get two, stunned. three, four. I'm all cocky three, now, but once we get stunned, they'll be like, yeah, I hate this game. They're cheating. How many? How much? If I give you one more, how much would you have? 
influence? Probably that's two, three, four, five, six. Oh, but you'll probably be stunned seven, before. Eight. You'll probably be stunned before you can use it, right? Because if you yeah, what happens? You have an ally in half cards. Yeah, I do have one ally. Well, I guess you can discard it. But card. yeah, I'll just discard one of these, so I wouldn't have that much. So as long as it six. doesn't stun you. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Well, you worry about buying something awesome. Yeah, I just want to buy this for four, so I don't need this. Then give me so one. So I'll give it can. to you. Yeah. Then I'll spend four. I would like this. Yes, so, yes, And yes. I can't put on the top, right? No. And then one attack going here. And then that single. I wish I could pass that to you. Yeah, I know. One. Nope. Not yet. That was on the bottom, right? Yeah. Son of a gun. Good? Yep. Uh, Butterbeer. Any two heroes each gain one influence and one health. Not yet. We got yeah. <laughs> we got we got the underage drinking police here that we're not allowed <laughs> to drink butterbeer while he's here. Doesn't do all all that what much. Okay. All right. Hand of glory. Oh. Active hero loses the health. Add a control to the location. So boom, I'm stunned. Uh, discard all tokens. Oh yeah, so I lose all the money. That's okay. It was a gamble. And half the cards in my hand, which is now I have six, so I'm losing half. Um. Well, if you keep the ally, will this make you discard a card because you can't lose the health? Yeah, but I need it for attack. This guy needs to go so we okay. can start like progressing. I yeah. think. Oh, they're gonna heal. Sorry, he's gonna heal one from this one, adding a location, and he's gonna heal again when we add another one. Hmm. Okay, so half my cards add a control. Okay. Uh, each time control is added, yeah, it keeps healing. That sucks. Uh, yeah, we need to get attack on. Reset my health to 10 at the end of the turn. Okay. Okay. Now here, an ally. I have an ally, so, so I'll, I'll discard, discard a card. A card. Um, okay, so now my turn. I guess I'll generate an attack with my owl. Now this one, the two attack... Or two money or two health, which doesn't do anything, or draw two cards. I'll do the two attack and two cards. Mm. Uh, gain an influence, use this, and gain an attack. If I also defeat a villain, I gain the money. Oh, one shy. Yep, but whatever. Mm. I don't think, Necrocomcon, I don't think you can lose the two health, can you? Like it says, lose oh, two health or discard hold a card. On, but if you're hold on, stunned, hold on, hold on. please. Oh, sorry. Keep answering. No, sorry. no, no. If you're stunned, I didn't. Like you can't lose the health. I didn't know that you can do that. Like choose that option if you can't do it. I'm gonna take this one back. And instead, with this card, I'm actually gonna discard it to look for a card of five or less. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Let's do this. Shuffle deck. Whatever. Whatever. Okay. And then with this, I'll play to draw two cards instead. And then this will gain me a money. And then for each ally I play this turn, gains me an attack. And then this just gains me money. So it'll just get me through my deck quicker. Oh, so you did the same amount of damage. I know, I know. Yeah, which is good. It could have done more, but either way, three money. Um, I think I just go to draw engine. Or money and draw or draw engine. I like this one. And but, if you're going with the items, if yeah, it's not helpful. That's what I'm thinking. Well, it's helpful, but I'll probably always do it for that. All right. So these are all discarded. Okay. Draw one. Hold on. Uh, shuffle. I'm just hoping that we are. Oh, yeah. If you want to just go just draw a card in the market. Choose one, gain two money, or search your discard pile for an item and put it in your hand. Oh, that's helpful for you if you don't Four have costs. the item to be able to do that. Oh, wow. That's a little complicated. No, it's okay. Going. I just need allies at this oh, point. Oh, active hero loses two health. Dang it. Okay. So I'm stunned. I discard any tokens I don't have. Lose half my cards. So let's just lose these two. Okay. Add a control. And to remove a health from here from the control. Dang, because I can do one. All right, well, let's gain an attack, draw a card. Nah. Okay, let's discard two spells. Okay, all heroes gain one influence and draw a card. I'm just hoping for the 
No, not that one. Uh, gain one. I can put spells on the top of my deck. Uh, this one can give me one or give both of us two, but I think it gives me one and I just take this one for the draw. Or the money to get and a bigger card later. Yeah, so That's all heroes gain one. Influence? Yes, influence. Then I spend three. This goes on the top of my deck because it's a spell from this one. And then this one goes here, and I'm, again, one shy because he healed. Dang it. Wow. I was hoping to draw my ally. Yeah, we need to get this to fire off so we can get stuff yeah. off there before it finishes and we lose. Yeah. We cannot let it get to the second one. All right. Incendio. Gain uh, an attack and draw a card. I like that one. For four. Okay, here we go. Oh, and then I heal. Then. Oh, no. Add one to the location. <sighs> And each time it's added, heal from each villain. Uh, then this dummy, right? Yep. I will lose a card. This one, actually, yeah. This one, this one, okay, real good. All yeah, right. if we can do two, four, five. He needs two to, to die if you have a card that... Okay, hold on, hold on. Let's get some info. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to discard this for here. Uh, I'll get to, all heroes draw a card for it, the discard. And I'm going to search my deck for a, a card of five or less value. Shuffle. Whatever. Okay. Then... I'm going to draw two cards, then discard any one card. Uh, will I defeat him this turn? If you can do two, yes. Yes. Okay, sure. Uh, so I'll discard this one card. This will also, when you defeat him, you'll gain an, an influence if that, just to math it in. Okay. Yeah, I just want to get him this turn. I don't want to get too greedy. So for this one, I'll generate two attack and draw two cards. I mean, I probably could buy two decent cards. Okay. Uh, then what I'll do is spend this to finish this idiot. Uh, all heroes gain one influence. Oh, hold on. I also need to have played this first, which would have gained an attack. And if you defeat a villain, gain an extra influence. Okay. So I'll get two from him. You get one influence from him. That also removes one yep, control. Remove from the location. We this... can now remove, which is good. If we have the ability to remove what? Uh, control. Oh, we could have the whole time. Yeah, never mind, never mind. No, we need Wrong. to do this guy so we can actually heal. Yeah. Because we can't keep getting stunned over and over again, or we'll just lose because it starts adding way too much to their, um, to their win condition. Right. That's yeah. how they speed themselves up. Okay. Then, um, I have any other card draw? So I'll just play this guy to gain an attack. I'll gain an influence. Uh, for each ally I play this turn, I'll gain um, uh, attack. Yeah. And then this will just give me four more influence. Uh, so the attack's going here. Oh, man, him shutting off my heal ability is I super know, annoying. I know. But I guess we're both full health, so it doesn't matter right now. Uh, what do I have here? Six, seven, eight, nine. Nine money on what turn of the game are we on? Like three. Maybe four. Three, I think, though. Uh, so that nine money, I definitely am buying the Serious Black plus the Polyjuice Potion combo, which I was originally going to start the game with, but other cards distracted me. You know, that meme with the guy looking at the other girl, you know? <laughs> Serious Black's a, like, angry girlfriend. Like, you said you were going to buy me. What happened to your buying allies? Okay. And that'll spend all my money. 
And done. Draw. Oh, only one card left in my deck. Again, I'm cycling again already? Weird. Weird. I get, keep drawing into cards like I just purchased. It's awesome. I'm going to flip this. We can do that in a second. It's not going to change anything. But, oh, active hero loses two health. This is annoying with the guy uh, that yeah. can't heal. Yep. Okay. Okay, new cards in the market. Oh, the allies are coming. Remus Lupin. Yeah, see, once we get rid of the healer guys, this guy's going to be clutch. Yep. Oh, yep, the allies were just being held back. Uh, Fred Weasley. So there's some die roll in action. Okay, the Weasley combos. Okay, starting my turn. Uh, active hero loses three health. One, two, three. And... If you were stunned, here, I'm not, and then reveal an additional card. Uh, Zomer, Zomer Droman, thank you for subscribing. Welcome to the channel. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, active hero chooses another hero to lose two health. Sorry, that's you. And then reveal another card. You have to lose two health. And then I have to reveal another one. All heroes lose two health and cannot gain health this turn. That's fine. We all lose two health. I can't gain health this turn. That's Whoa. Fine. I'm not even playing my turn. I'm already this low on health. I know. I'm so what sorry. What just happened? Here, all heroes draw a card. Oh, that's nice. Okay, that makes up for it. Oh, sorry. I didn't have any allies in my hand at the time. Active hero lose two. I almost skipped this. Okay, now draw a card. Uh, let's gain an attack. Uh, I just want to peek at my discard here for a second. Um, Sam's asking about Hoplomachus streams. Yeah, Chip Theory reached out. Uh, Hoplomachus, uh, what's the remastered stuff? Is it called Hoplomachus Remastered? They just reached out asking, uh, you know, if my address is still the same. Uh, and they plan to send that out. So I don't know if they shipped it already. But yeah, we'll definitely be playing more Hoplomachus when that arrives for sure. But Victorum, I'm not sure right now. Definitely wasn't going to play it anytime soon. I know I talked about playing it, I think, when backers get it. But it just took too long, and I had just built up a bigger queue of other games to play. So I definitely feel like I spent enough hours streaming Hoplomachus on the channel that I need to spend some time on other games. Yeah. But I definitely will play more of that solo like in the future, but I'm not going to make any promises right now. But yeah, that definitely is there already. If you already watched all of it, I'm sorry, but maybe, maybe some other channels have some stuff too. Um... But yeah. She can draw a card, but I got a shuffle, so. But yeah, Hoplomog is remastered. When that arrives, Mel and I will give that a run for sure. Yes. Play some multiplayer in that game. I'm excited for that, actually. Okay. Oops. Draw a card. I will draw a card. I will discard two spells for all heroes to gain one influence. Let's use well and draw a card. Do I draw a card? Yep. <gasps> Whoa, look at this. Look at all these cards okay, are good. Okay, and then one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, four, six. Uh, for my ability of playing four or more spells, you may gain an influence. Put this on here. Let's spend four. Do I have anything about putting spells on the top of my deck? No. Let's spend one, two, three, four, four. Did you draw Crookshanks after this? I did. Yeah. So I did, yes. There you go, James. That's why. She didn't have it in her hand at the start of her turn. No, I drew it. Like when she was doing the villain step or whatever. No. I drew it with the all heroes draw card. Spending four. The cat wasn't home at the time. This one. Two is going to do nothing. Fine. Done. One, two, three, four. Uh, pensive. Any two heroes each gain one influence and draw a card. I like that. Not so much later in the game. Usually this shows up like mid-game and I'm like, eh. It's still very early, but... I have other card draw cards that I like better. But... Alright. We good? Yep. Here we go. Uh, for each card with a value of four more in hand, active hero loses a health. Oops. One, two, three, four. One, just one. Okay. Uh, for each ally in hand, I have one. Lose two health or discard a card? Oh, I think I'll discard this card. Oh. Oh, all heroes will draw a card. Sweet. Whoops. 
Um, and then active hero loses two health. Oh my. And I can't heal. Okay. But if we can kill him, we gain three health and remove two control. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, but I don't have much attack right now, but okay. I do have card draw. I have two attack on my turn. Yes, you have Polyjuice right now with only this guy. So it's like I could just toss this to go grab a five cost card or less, which I have one there. I just don't know if I have one still in my deck. But let's just do this. Let's draw two cards, then discard any one. I just really need four costs, so I don't care about money right now because I already am sitting on two thanks to you. You're welcome. So really the money generation cards are kind of useless. Um, okay, let's play Serious Black, making up for lost time, and uh, I'll generate those. Then I'll give him the juice, uh, so he'll gain two more uh, attack and one more influence. And do I have enough to kill him? Yep. Yep. Get out. Okay, I'll kill this guy mid-turn. Uh, all heroes, heal three. And remove two control. Remove two control from the location. That means you can finally use your ability. Yep, <laughs> which I will do. I definitely assign three or more on my turn. So yeah. any one hero, I'll just say me because mm -hmm. I'm more important <laughs> in my life. Uh, I'm just joking. When it comes down to it, uh, I'm just kidding. All good. And then I'll just play this guy who will generate one attack. Let's put it there. Mm -hmm. And then four more influence. So I'm at eight. And with eight, I'll just buy these two allies. And throw away all my money. Throw these away. Draw five. Deck's empty. Patrick, what's oh, that's the token one. Gain one attack. Choose a villain. Until the start of your turn, that villain's ability does not trigger. Ooh, yeah, I need to get cost, this. Though. It's the mute button. Yeah. The mute I like button. like it. And the stupid book. Oh. Oh, sorry. Before I do this, I got to do this. Got to do this first. Oh, we got Karen. <laughs> uh, each time a hero acquires a card with a value of four or more influence, that hero loses one health. Oh, son of a gun. Also, Kate, zip it. <laughs> he's fine, he's Can't fine. stay out of this. <laughs> so far, we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was only joking. <laughs> uh, all heroes lose one health and cannot draw extra cards this turn. No! Lose one health, all heroes. Lose, one, lose health. one health. Uh, do I have any allies? Hold on one sec. Sam, no, buttering me up. One, Stop two. buttering me up, Sam. Okay. What is Sam saying? He's trying to butter me up for more Victorum. I know. I know, oh. I know. I will play it. It's just I have other games I'm focused on. <laughs> I'm focused on Prime Minis reading rule books. I spent like two days, three days this week focused on that Skyrim stupid oh, yeah. bad rules board game. Uh, to hopefully I got my head wrapped around that game enough. Um, teaching Mel and now I have to teach Kyle on stream. Um, so yeah, just sometimes games literally like eat up multiple days for me to like wrap my heads around them. So the problem is too, we don't know how long it's gonna take, right? When yeah. like before we start one, like I didn't realize. And, and, and the other problem with Victorum is like I literally have to clear like a week and a half of schedule to like relearn it and then streaming it you saw I definitely wouldn't do the streams that long I would cut it up but then it's like I'll be playing for multiple weeks and it's just like I have a lot of other games solo games even too that I should be spending time on but like right now I'm in miniature we're trying to get miniatures painted and stuff for um for future streams so like yeah. I spent like an entire day priming like 50 minis yeah, this week. Yeah, like, did multiple games. Yeah, me. like air air priming them or whatever. Yeah. With the airbrush, different colors and stuff. Um, yeah, so it's like, uh, yeah, I should have some solo time coming up soon that'll just like de definitely focus on a game, but I have another game that I definitely want to crack open. I might even play some Skyrim solo before we put that one back on the shelf uh, after we play the campaign too, so we'll see. A giant warehouse. Yeah, you'll No, but it's like, a, there, there's, there's so many. There's games still in shrink that I'm like, no, I don't think we're playing anytime soon, so I'm not priming those yet. Because, like, it, I feel so bad. It gets, like, Mel has, like, a factory queue, literally a factory yeah. queue of, like, here's all the minis for this game, here's the minis for this game, here's the minis for this game, here's the minis for this game that matter at the beginning, here's the minis on another tray that matter for later. So she has, like, this priority that keeps switching of, like, which one she needs to work on and stuff. I feel so bad. So I don't want to keep 
piling them up in front of her. So no, I like it because I, I take like one or two days. <laughs> I take one or two days a month to like just grab a whole bunch of minis, get out the airbrush, you know, prime them all. Mel has to look them up, tell me what colors, what type of priming she wants on them, and yep. I just sit there like priming, and then you know while they're drying, I go back and reprime them upside down and stuff. It's like a whole day affair. I, I try to put it all into one day. So it takes like a long time, but uh, and then it just makes this mountain staring at Mel of miniatures, and I feel bad. So. No, I, I I definitely need the mountain of miniatures staring at yeah. me because it gives me motivation. <laughs> like, whoa, I need to clear this off of the shelf. But the cool but, part uh, is some of those ones that that and once you paint them, hopefully we'll play through a whole campaigns yeah, with them. So yeah. they'll get lots of airtime. It'll be fun. One of the biggest problems. Um, also, I did fix that. Thank you. So I, I added a health incentive in one way. Thank you. Thank you. I fixed that. Um, one of the other problems is that I like start painting a game. Then the next game comes in and we're like, oh, we want to put this one in first. So then this one's like yeah. almost done. So then I move yeah. over to this one. And yeah, it just causes like games all in different states of yeah. progress. And this is why I hate promising I'm going to play something. And I should, Sam, I shouldn't have said that, that I'm going to play Victorum when it starts arriving to backers because like I can't predict the future. And like sometimes just literally a game finally get an email that it, a game that was out of print or a new print run has come in at my local game store. Us getting that game just gets me excited. And I want to be passionate and play games that I'm really wanting to play, not feeling forced. Because sometimes you guys see what happens when I'm getting frustrated with a game. And I keep thinking, no, it'll just get better. Um, so sometimes when games just, I get an email from a local game store, it's like, this game is back in print or back in stock. I buy the game, it shows up the next day, and all of a sudden I cleared the table. I'm like, I am now playing this game, and the game I was practicing or relearning uh, is going back on the shelf. We already have streams of it. So this yeah. game has no streams. I want to focus on this game now. It's just how I do. I like being like more dynamic here instead of more rigid and making it feel like a job, even though it is. Because uh, then it's more fun for us. Yeah, right? I, I, it's an ongoing struggle of keeping this feeling like a hobby for me and not a job. But it is a job, but I, I need to like... It will show. Any job I've worked at over a certain amount of time, if I don't feel like it's, you know, you know I think you I mean. will know what you mean. Yeah. I'm I don't want to become a disgruntled employee too often. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just answer Velgo's question because it's super easy. Uh, says, Mel, which game minis um, you like the best to paint? My favorite have been uh, Legend, uh, Descent Legends of the Dark. That was like one of my top ones. And then Massive Darkness 2 have been my two favorite to paint. Mm. I love those ones. Um, okay, so I can't draw cards. Already did all this. I fixed the health. Thank you so much. Um, gain one attack. Can't draw a card. Of course, I have so many cards that are going to let me draw cards, but I can't. So we're going to gain an attack. Can't draw a card. Well, uh, I'm excited when you finally get to paint the mini that was under the red, oh, under the, the veil. Yeah, uh, for like descent. Whenever, but that's for an expansion, I think. So we're not even going to see that till like probably next year or yeah, something. Yeah, but. But that, yeah. I, I want to see how crazy they get with that plastic and how big some of the miniatures get. That's crazy. Gain one. Uh, no, gain one influence. Yeah, I can't wait to see that either. I'm going to gain two since I can't draw a card. Uh, gain one. I may put spells on the top of my deck. And two, well, I need the two for myself this time. Sorry, because I want to buy that six coster. Mm -hmm. So then let's do two attack here. And then we'll spend six. On this, which will go on top of my deck, which will give me, I think I only need one of them, but that's fine. That goes on top of my deck. She says I have to lose a health because I spent more than four on a card. Annoying. And uh, this I'll give you one influence for spent playing four spells. Ooh. And done. All right. Really wish I could have drawn cards there. Oh, I could have drawn three cards. Game five card. The owls gain two money uh, if you play two or more spells. Also oh, gain an attack and a health. I need this. That's Mel's card. I have like all spells. Uh, so I drew dark arts. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you just saw Slimer and Ghostbusters. Uh, all heroes reveal the top card of their deck. <gasps> oh. Heroes that reveal a spell. Discard it and lose two health. Oh, oh uh, uh -huh. if I have to reveal, do I need a deck? I yeah. do, right, in this game? Down to one. I'm going to be stunned. Oh, no, no, no. Maybe Rob has some heal up his sleeve. Uh, not a spell. All right. Uh, so, yeah. So, a card that didn't even do anything to me. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Feels strange. Did to me though. Feels like I'm cheating. Uh, for each ally in hand. 
Nothing. Oh. He's hiding right here. Active hero loses two health. Each time a hero acquires a card with a value of four or more money, that hero loses a health. Yeah, annoying. Hmm. Screw you, Dolores. Oh, I don't have much money, so yet. Oh, I could, though. I could. We need to de defeat the Dementor, though. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, Yogi says Rob's deck is basically godlike. Uh, let's keep it down a little bit on the praise of Rob, okay? <laughs> so Sam had the good feedback on the, the quality of the streams and, and what, how I do things different here. So already I'm very buttered up. And Yogi is just like slapping some icing on that uh, the juicy feedback cake there. Uh, I'm not going to say stop. Today, I will. <laughs> I, I'm not one to, for, for positive feedback, I feel like I never deserve it. But I, sometimes it feels nice, I'll admit it. <laughs> Keep it coming today. I'm in a good mood. Today you need it? <laughs> no, I'm just yeah, bring it on. I'm I'm in a good mood. We're having some fun with it. They Harry don't Potter. want you they don't want you to give up today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you said the deck is basically godlike. Yeah, but you built but, the deck. But who who put the cards in there? Yeah, who, so that's what he's getting around who, about who playing. It was beautiful. It just works. It makes me look better because I rambled about the strategy I like to do and how to play these games good. And then the market was just it just gave me like here, Rob, here's the perfect cards you need to buy to build your engine. But it doesn't always do that, so it's like part of it was luck, but yeah, but uh, yeah, my deck's busted already, which, like, that early busted is what really makes it godlike. I think I did help contribute some influence to that deck, just saying. That, that's the thing, though, we worked with the information know, we had, we, I know. we picked the right cards, they We worked helping. together. We still have a thousand villains to beat, though, so we're not out of the woods yet, but... Well, yeah, that's true, that's true. I'm just debating pitching an item. I know this guy's in my deck. Like, I know I have allies in there that are five or less. I could just go grab. So let me... Let me... But I know he's on the top of my deck, thanks to this giving me information. So I could just draw cards from this. I know I get him. Um, so you could go either way. Yeah, it, it works the same. So for this, I'm going to generate... Uh, to attack and draw two cards. Oh. Oh, I guess, yeah, I'll just pitch this one for this ability. Uh, when I do, uh, we all draw a card, and then this will let me search my deck for a value of five or less card. Uh, what's good? Oh, two cards, discard one. Yeah, let's just take the draw cards card of three, I think. I could take this ally. What do allies get me right now? They get me more attack, actually. So it's like he has an attack, but I could draw into him. Maybe I won't. Sorry, I'm just going to show. I don't think, not this one. I think it's this one just is him. He just chooses two. Not all allies. Or all heroes, sorry. Yeah, this is the All Heroes one I did. Yeah. I discarded this so All Heroes draw a card. So it still gets me two cards. And yeah, I think, me search, thought, I, think, yeah. I think they thought that that one gives okay. All Heroes, but no. I'll, I'll just do this. I'm going in the draw. Yeah, I'm going hard into the draw. And cycling my deck. I'm all about the cycle. So this will let me draw two cards. No need to say sorry. Great, great just, question. Yeah, yeah, that's questions yeah, for sure. Something... Sometimes we don't um, um, say out loud and describe in the best our audio to match our, what's happening visually. Uh, we need to work on that. Um, so yeah, we appreciate it. Ask questions. If so, you don't follow along, like, yeah, sometimes you can't see it. You're watching on a phone. You can't see all the cards and we're flying around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Feel free to ask. That's what the chat's there for. Not just to listen to Yogi trolling us. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. Uh, Discard a card. Yeah, I don't care. I don't care about money. All right, that's resolved. Uh, okay. Let's just gain uh one attack. Any one hero heals three. Oh, thank you, savior. Gain I may not be stunned. Two attack and one influence. Uh, gain one influence, and for each ally I played this turn, one, two, I gain an attack. Uh, gain one attack. If you defeat a villain, gain another money. Here's three money. You will de defeat a villain, I think. Yep. 
So e he five. needs five. Does he give change back? <laughs> so he's defeated. So I definitely gain another influence off of that. Okay, all heroes gain two health. Boom, boom. And then remove one control. Yep, and I definitely assign more than three, uh, three or more attacks. So uh, you can heal too. Wow, thank you so much. I went from one to eight. Yep. I know. Whoa. When it's your turn, I go down to like zero. <laughs> <laughs> on my turns, you go up. You see how that works? That's how team, that, that that's wasn't what me. a team player does, Mel. That wasn't me. I had to draw like four dark arts cards. That was a problem. Oh, did I? I didn't buy anything. But Where'd you put the rest of your damage? Here. Oh, okay. I'm debating. Oh, sorry. I thought you put it in the bin. Yeah, I'll put it there. Um, and then she's going to make me lose a health for each. I have seven. Do I even want any of these, though? Yeah, the only reason I bought it is because it's that one that put the shield. <laughs> yeah, I want this one just for trolls. I wouldn't. I don't need to buy anything right now, <laughs> but I do want to cycle to maybe see more allies, so that's why I'm buying this, but I really don't think I should buy anything from here. But I know Mel will probably buy this owls one, but... Yeah, I'm thinking about it because it definitely helps. Yeah, so I think I'll just buy this because I like the way I can get two money to help. I don't need that right now. But it does allow me to search for an item. We know I have 45 items in my deck now, and that will help me do my trans configuration, transfiguration, whatever. So I'll just buy this, even though it's going to hurt me. Um, because I bought it, she's going to say, uh, she slaps my hand with her little, her little wand there. And then for the other three, I'm just going to throw those away. But right there would be a perfect spend five to remove uh, control if I had that one. Like I'm at the point where I think my deck is like solid enough that I could just keep spending money to keep that under control if I had that ability. But again, this is helping my deck be what it is too. So I can't say I wouldn't get here without it. Five cards. Fill this. Oh, oh. now I want money. This would be the oh. ultimate. This would be the ultimate. Yeah, if I can get that in my deck and, and, and give him the juice. And uh, yeah. That would be the last card I buy. I'm not oh, buying no. anything else except for that. What does she say? Reveal an additional dark arts event this turn. What's up with all that hair? It's just so much yeah, hair. She does have a lot of hair. Yeah, it's look a little matted too. But okay. So I guess yeah, she now needs to go. Yeah. So an extra dark arts first. event. That's what how, what loses us the game every time. Yeah. So doing dark arts first. We'll oh, go here. Oh man, she's got to go. Uh, all heroes reveal the top card of their deck. Heroes that reveal a card with a value of one or more discard it and lose two health. Uh, mine's a starter oh, card. Starter card. Beautiful. Yeah, love this game. Uh, do I have any allies? Did you no. reveal an additional? Now I will reveal an additional for her. Uh, active hero loses two health. Boom, boom, six. Thank you so much oh, because Necro I would have been stunned. She's the worst card in the game, in his opinion. Oh, okay. <laughs> James says the same thing. She's the worst. Okay, we'll get rid of her All right, first then. So we now have a new worst villain. Okay, let's they start with worse. who knew this. Uh, gain one attack and choose a villain until the start of the next turn. The ability does not trigger. Hold on one second, actually. Until the start of your next turn. Until the start right? of my next turn. Yeah, I'm not buying. Yeah, it's Gandalf her. Yet. I know. I was just. Yeah. Uh, it's her. Okay, it's her. This it's her. card is for her. Okay, then I'm going to. Oh, no, 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 not that one, man. Uh, this one. Hmm. All heroes draw a card. That's you as well. What? Draw, draw a card? card. Uh, I will choose to draw a card. I will choose an attack. I will discard two spells. Uh, all heroes gain one influence and draw a card. I have to shuffle. Perfect. Uh, three influence. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, two attack. So are we moving attack here? Uh, yeah. There's nothing healing it off anyone, but I think in there it might. But I still say we get her, like, fast. Okay. He's annoying, and he's getting more annoying as I get more allies, but... But he might be a quick easy that you can... I can still just pitch cards to, uh... And he's also, like, as a heal, so we can kind of save it. But it does let you search your discard pile for an ally, but that'll that'll be good later too. So, but it does it is enough that potentially when you have a big hand, you can put Maybe. some here, kill an ally or a but villain. Yeah, it's or whatever. Fine, okay, it's fine. I will spend four. I don't really want to, but I will to get this. If I play two or more spells, I also gain that. 
she's going to tell me I have to lose the health. Did I do this already? No. So I will give one influence to you. Oh, yes. He's getting closer. And then I'm done. That's a draw. Wingardium Leviosa. Gain one. You may put items you acquire. Well, if I had that at the start of the game, that'd be different. But I don't really care about these cards. That's a garbage right now. Okay. All heroes choose one. Discard an item or lose two health. All right, one sec. Uh, lose two health. I don't have an item, so we'll lose two health. Okay. For each ally in hand, have two. Lose two health or discard a card. Here's the thing. I want this guy so bad that now I'm going to value money over attack on this turn. So I think I'll discard Pidgeywidgeon. I have two, three, four, five, six. Not Do you enough. Have draw? Well, yeah, I can, yeah, I can uh, pitch this even to draw. Yeah, that's a thing. This guy doesn't get me money necessarily. He could on the die roll, but it's the healed die. Oh no, it's the money die. It's a money die. Hmm. So he could get me a money, both of us, but maybe not. Yeah, I'll just pitch him, I think. All right. And then she's muted. Yep. That's better. Uh, each time a hero acquires a card, well, we'll see. I'll gladly take that health if I can acquire that one. All right. Let's start here. Uh, once per turn, I can pitch this item. Five or less. Five or less. It's probably, oh, yeah, this one, I think, right? It could draw into more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so draw two cards. Oh, I think you have enough. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, not these cards. Oh, wait, I want these cards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Normally I'm like, oh, not these. So that should be six and you already have two. Yeah, yeah. So You're I have welcome. it right there. So I'll just do it. Yeah. Who cares about getting <laughs> yeah. Obviously. Okay. Take this guy and then lose a health from her, right? Yep. And then draw. One, two, three, four, five. I want to draw into more draws is what I was thinking, but then it, I'm really just trying to get like... I was hoping I would draw into the one that gives me a choice with the, the seven cost one. Oh, yeah. Thinking I'll draw off that and take two money, and that should draw into more money, but I thought I just screwed it up there, but no, it actually worked. All right. All right. Did you do any attack? No, so you don't get your nope. ability. Okay. No, no, no. Oh, uh, another potion. Juice. There's two of them. Oh, if you're going to have don't two touch of it. them, don't I'm touch not going to touch it. I don't want that. Okay, my turn? Yeah. Starting here. Uh, this goes away. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I would have remembered when I got there. Uh, for each card with a value of four or more in hand, active hero loses one. I don't think I have any. Oh, two. Uh-oh. Uh, I don't have any allies. Oh, you guys didn't know what I bought? Harry Potter Gandalf. Yeah, Harry Potter Gandalf. So good. Like, the best card in the game, I think, so far. Okay, I'm revealing an additional dark arts because of our friend here, Annoying. Uh, all heroes lose one health and add a control to location. That will make me stunned. I will add a control to location. Then I will discard all tokens. I don't have any. Nick Fury. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Well, no, X. this is better than Nick Fury because... Yeah, it doesn't leave play, right? At the end of the turn? Oh, wait, he does. Four or more, Mal. <laughs> what? So sorry. Uh, cost four or more you lost health on. Oh, it was only one. It was only one. It was only one. I don't know what it was from. It was only one. You're right. Yeah, for each card with a value of four or more in So hand. then I'm not stunned. I'm not stunned. I'm at one then. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thanks, Edgar. Sorry. I don't know why I just assumed anything Ed Edgar with a number pink. on it. Pink, Edgar. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So I'm not stunned. I'm at one. Right? Tony is watching on TV and phone, but TV is about five seconds delayed. Because the TV is probably a higher resolution picture, so it's on. Uh, it, it's delayed because of the encoding takes longer to make the higher resolution picture. Okay, uh, so let's start with 
I can draw, yes. Remove the control you added from being stunned. I don't think, I didn't, I didn't yet. I didn't get that far. I didn't get that far. Uh, I added a control from this. Oh, okay. Yeah, we had one at the start of her turn, I think. Yes. I she added one from the second Dark Arts card she drew. Yeah, and then I thought I was done, so then I was going to start the process, but I didn't I didn't do that yet. Okay, so we're good, we're good. So good. sorry, yep. I just, when that card came up, I was like, anything with a number on it, I have to, yeah, sorry. All heroes draw a card. All right. Okay. Oh, I may, may need to gain a heal. I think I got to gain a heal on this one, sorry. Yeah, do whatever you want. Gain two. You're apologizing for. Uh, let's... Although... <laughs> Draw a card. Go. But yeah, you heal, that's fine. Okay. Let's discard two spells. Uh, all heroes gain one influence and draw a card. <laughs> I will draw a card. I will gain two. One, two. <laughs> I don't think I even want any cards. Oh my god. <laughs> that real, Stacy? Stacy says there's a video from Studio C called Lord of the Potter. You should watch. Gandalf meets Harry. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I don't even think I want any of these cards. So all heroes gain one influence because maybe you can use it for something. I have four, which I don't think I even need. Unless I just buy the butterbeer for the heal that's coming around. But this might dilute your deck, no? No, so I think like I'm done after that. Like, I already have enough draw and combo and stuff. I think I'm good. So, yeah, I'll just buy this one for three, and I think I'm done drawing. Or, I mean, purchasing. Unless, like, something phenomenal comes uh, out. Fleur de la Cour. Uh, gain two money. Oh. If you play another ally, also gain two health. Okay, one, two, whatever. Three, four, five. All right. Here we go. Uh, what are we doing? All heroes lose two health and cannot gain health this turn. Sorry, Yogi, what are you asking? That spell that Mal play, plays that she just draws, doesn't it attack? Which? No, she has two in her deck I have that two she different. chooses two money or draw, draw a card. I have this one. Two of them in her deck. Two of them, which I had. And then I have another one, which is this one. Yeah. So I you, have two of those as well. She, she, has, she has this one. And then she also has uh, this one. Yeah, okay. and I... Get, get your spells right, okay? <laughs> so when she does this one, she picks two money or draws a card. But Sorry. When she, when she does this one, she then gets to uh, attack, attack and draw a card. Draw a card which okay? is my next turn coming. So just pay attention. Oh, I didn't I didn't do the wand movement. Yeah, so he wasn't sure. It was hard to follow. Yeah, yes, pay attention to the wand <laughs> Positioning and movements and spell casting. Right. Okay, Yogi, I'm come sorry. on. That was my bad. But yeah, I have two of each, so it is kind of confusing. I'm sorry. But just trust me, okay? <laughs> yes, Jacko says, agreed. We need the wand movements. Okay. I know if we had a toy wand, I would have been using it for fun on the stream. But our daughter did have a Harry Potter thing one year, but she Yeah, got... she dressed up as Hermione one year. Yeah, she got rid of the wand. We couldn't find it. That was a few years back. But... Yeah. Yeah, I would have definitely been trolling you guys with wand movements a few times. But, uh, yeah, I thought she had a scarf too, all right, but so I couldn't find it. I am losing health or something, right? No, why? This one. All heroes lose two health. Oh. Boom. I'm stunned. I cannot gain health this turn. So I'm stunned. I discard all tokens. I lose half my cards, which out of seven will be three of them, right? It's rounded down. Oh, we're going too fast? Jokey face. <laughs> Can't gain heal this turn, meaning I'm probably going to be stunned on my turn, too. Annoying. Okay, and then uh, add a thing to location. Okay. Uh, and I'll reset the 10 at the end of the turn. Two allies in hand? I have two allies in hand, so... Oh... Ooh. Okay, rewind. So these are the three cards I discard. Okay, now you have no allies. I have no you allies. Reveal an additional dark arts. Yeah. Sorry, I need to get that spell back. Remove two health from all villains. Yep. Oh that no. Sucks. Yeah, I knew that would happen if we didn't. We started splitting. 
Okay, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, let's um choose two. Let's gain two attack and draw two cards. One, and now I need to shuffle. Oh, I probably should have done this, but it's okay. I need a deck actually. This is actually better. Okay, draw a second card. Okay. Draw two cards and discard one. Let's just get rid of one of these. Uh, let's choose one. I'm going to play okay, mm -hmm. this spell. Achoo! Uh, Akio! I don't know, whatever. <laughs> at, 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 Asayo! <laughs> A-C-C-I-O. Uh, gain two money or search your discard pile for an item put it in your hand. Oh, shoot, it's item. Or, uh, discard. Yeah, I should so have done that. you have to do this first. That's fine. Yeah, uh, yes, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm kidding there. That makes more You'll sense. You'll get it back, whatever it is, so it doesn't really matter. Do either one, right? You're going to get it back? Yeah, I know. But I'm um, just thinking about what ally or what to card to get from here and stuff. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I'll just pitch this one. Uh, search for five costs or less card. Okay, whatever. Then, um, uh, so now I could just draw first and get this one back instead. You could, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna play. Oh, oh no, it won't be my discard. It won't be my discard. Oh yeah, right? this yeah. One, like, kinda... Yeah, because I can't discard it for this. This would have been best to have this discard it, get it back, do it again, like mm -hmm. uh, draw cards with it. Okay. So yeah, I'll just do this one, pull this back. Uh, this one, I'll just draw two cards. One, two. Uh, let's play this one. Gain one attack. You have a Weasley in hand? I don't think Probably I bought not, an ally. Right? No. Uh, heal. I don't uh, think I can. Didn't this say... Oh yeah, we can't heal All this heroes turn. lose two health and cannot gain yeah, health this so this guy I can't heal. Okay, see? Die sucks. Alright. Uh, this, I'll just gain an attack with Pidgey Uh, I guess I'll play this. Gain an influence for each ally you play this turn. I think it was only two. Yeah. Uh, gain an attack for each one. And then two more influence. And gain attack if you also do be a villain. Which I don't think I'll do. I can do it if you I want. You could if you want, but, but I can't heal right now, so no. I don't want to kill him. But you can search your discard pile for an ally. You don't have one, right? Oh, this girl needs to go. We can't keep drawing dark arts cards. So yeah, sign seven. Again, I can't heal off this. So annoying. Or nobody can. Oh, and I can kill her. Uh, okay. So for three money, I'm buying this. I don't get punished by her, but it wouldn't matter anyway. So another polyjuice. Polyjuice. Oh, this might be the last card I buy then. Excuse <laughs> me, last card. <laughs> we may not need it, but I like stopped. to have it just in case. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Dark Arts card. Active hero loses two health. Uh, of course, I knew that was gonna happen. So I'm now stunned. Ooh, stunned. Remove any tokens. I don't have any. One, two, three, four, five. I will just get rid of these two cards and then add a control to location. Okay. I do not have any allies. Reveal an additional dark arts card. 
Wants to add another control to the location. Whoa. And then we're good. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to buy anything this turn, really. I'm going to gain an attack and draw a card. I'm doing this. Okay. I'm going to do this again. Gain an attack. Draw a card. No, no, no. What? Isn't that, is that wrong? Your final movement across the bottom was too straight. You, oh. need to, you need to lift the wand a little bit or I need the spell to go, on fire. I need to go to um, school a little bit more for that. <laughs> Gain one. Influence. Keep practicing your I wand will. movements. I will, I'm sorry. Gain one. Okay. <laughs> Yogi says, I can follow everything a lot better when the spell casting is done properly. You're right. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Two, four... Six, eight. Okay, so I'm gonna two, four, six, seven, not eight. So then I'll add two here, which will kill, defeat her. No, she's killed. I'm ripping her up after this. <laughs> All heroes may search their discard pile for an item and put it in their hand, and also remove two from this location. Okay, two control has been removed. I don't want that to be forgotten. Can okay, never pick mm -hmm. these up. You're full. Okay, I'm going to take this one, add it to my hand. I'll play it in a second. Sorry, you got those. Okay, so then I will play this one, which I only need one. So each each hero can gain one influence. That's you as well, sorry. Gain one influence. And then I will spend three for this spell. And you may put spells you acquire on top of my deck. And I did not play four spells, unfortunately, this turn, and I didn't do that ability. That's fine. Okay. Another owl's item. Gain two. You play two or more spells. Also gain attack and a health. Um, sorry, one second. One second. Oh, yeah. New villain. Active hero loses one health. Great. Yeah. And I go back to full, sorry. And go ahead. Uh, add a control to the location, please. Uh, for each ally in hand, I have two. Discard a card, sure. I need to get rid of this guy next, I think. Active hero, lose the health. And each time I buy, lose the health. Okay. Well. Well. Let's start the party. Uh, Gandalf. All heroes gain one attack, one influence, one health, and draw a card. Love it, thank you. Couldn't benefit from the health, but that's fine. Choose an ally. All heroes gain a health, or sorry, an attack, an influence, a health, and draw a card. <laughs> oh, Karen and male Karen. Oh, got it. That makes sense. <laughs> okay. uh, I'm going to gain two attacks. Did attack. you do this? And you probably already healed it. Yeah, I did. Okay. Gain two attack. And I'll draw two cards. Draw one. Shuffle time. Okay. Uh, gain two attack. And an influence. In one attack, any one hero heals two health, doesn't matter. And then gain three. Oh, I didn't do this, did I? Mm. Uh, that's okay. I'm not going to do it. I should have taken the draw one, though, but whatever. Uh, okay. And then three influence. Seven. Is there anything big and juicy? No. No, there's nothing worth it for what I want to do. Even that ally is not worth it. It's not getting me attack, only getting me influence and some health. Don't care about that at this point. So I'm not buying anything. Because I just want to see juicier cards and combos. I want to see combos happen more often. So diluting this combo, putting more cards in my deck, reduces the odds of me seeing that happen together. Even with all the draw and the tutor and stuff. What are you doing with your attack? Uh, oh yeah. And... Uh, um. I have seven of it. Uh, I'm going to draw another not draw a little lizard guy soon. I feel like. Okay. 
You don't need to heal. This guy will gain money. Could lead you buying cards. Oh, but or I can search for an ally. And put it in my hand. Yeah, let's just get rid of this guy. Then I think you need to slightly rewind. Will you have an ally in hand? Because you put your cards in your discard. That's your new hand. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, I wasn't even done my turn. I don't know. So if you all this stuff would not yeah, be in my have, discard. So it's up to you. Oh, it's discard. Yeah, duh. Not my deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can just. He's not the worst. Yeah, okay, this guy goes. All heroes gain a money and heal one. So I would have had an extra money. Yeah. That's fine. Don't care. And then I'll put one here. Yeah, I think that's good. And then I'll give you those. And cards. these are all my discard. I drew new cards. These go away. Alrighty. Next villain. Heroes cannot remove control from the location. Okay. Uh oh, it's pretty full. That too. is where things kind of go a little bit. But he'll let us remove two if we can hurry and kill okay. him quick. Uh, active hero loses one health and adds a control to the location. Oh, so we're two away from losing control of that location. Yeah, and I just put the spell on top of my deck that removes the control, which now will do nothing. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, actually, what if I do this? Like turn them off? Yeah, if I uh, turn them off, works. then yep. it works, right? Bingo, yep. Put okay. some duct tape over his mouth. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> no, Gan thank you. Gandalf, Nick Fury, Dumbledore rules. Remove one. <laughs> He's shut off. Okay, uh, I'm going to gain two. Influence. Influence. If I have played two or more spells, also gain an attack and a health. Attack and a health. I'm going to discard two spells. All heroes can gain one influence and draw a card. I will gain an attack. Oh, I don't usually have this much. <laughs> gain two. Influence. Uh, so we need to get rid of this guy, right? One, two, three, four, yeah, five. So. Okay, five. And then two. Oh, I'll give you for my ability, I'll give you one influence because I did play for more than four. Two, four, anything. six, eight. This one's not bad. Any two heroes each gain an influence. At least it draws like two cards for itself so it replaces itself so it's not like too the bad the only thing i was gonna take is this one again if you play two or more spells also gain an attack and a health i mean which yeah, kind of just too works. Many. i don't know yeah and two, it do whatever. clears that's for four yeah, yeah, that's fine whatever karen is uh, gonna make me lose a health and then i'm i'm not gonna do anything with these four. Oh, oh my gosh okay one. there's the second one so sorry lied i might buy that <laughs> or rob can <laughs> one two three four five all right. <laughs> Lependo, active hero, loses health and discards a card. Uh, I'll oh, discard this card. Oh, oh, I discarded it, so all heroes draw a card. Whoops. 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 Uh, okay, allies in hand. Uh, I got two of them. So I lose two health or discard a card. I'll just discard these two cards. I know, I need to stop lying. Sorry. But then better cards. Each time, can... yeah, stop promising stuff in the future, <laughs> like Hoppa Market streams. Uh, each time a hero acquires a card with a value of four or more. Yeah, okay. All right. Was the card I acquired four? Oh, yeah, it was. Okay. So I, and I did lose it. I did, I did, I did. I just want to make sure. I... Well, my draw engine is not here, but it could be. Needs how much? Two, two more? I think. Two, four, five. Yeah, exactly five. All That'll right. I'm going to toss control. this item to grab a card that costs five or less from my deck. Three. Or a card. Yeah, I'll take this one. Shuffle. Okay. And this one. From my discard pile, grab an item and put it in your hand. <laughs> Where is it? Oh, was it in my deck? Or is it in my hand? Where's my other seven? Was it in there? I didn't even look. There it is. Seven costs are in my discard pile. <laughs> you can take any item. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Uh, then this, I'm going to get two attack. Hmm, draw two cards. Draw two cards. And discard any one card. This guy is going to give me an attack. Oh, do I have a Weasley? Have no, a Weasley? I'm just kidding. I don't have any else. <laughs> okay. Roll the red. Money for okay. each of us, whatever. Sure. Uh, Pidgey Widgeon. Be an attack. Uh, let's do Polyjuice, I think, because I'm not drawing anymore, unfortunately. Polyjuice for Mr. Weasley here. Roll the red die again. Money again. Gain money. And for each ally I played, which was two of them, I gain attack. And gain influence. So attack I have seven total. So let's put two here. Okay. Finish that guy off. Two control. Yeah. Did I have the if you defeat a villain, some goodies happen? No, I don't think so. Nope. Okay. And then I still have five more. Oh, you could kill another one. Get an ally from your discard pile. Yep. Let's do that. Okay. All heroes. Sh oh, choose one. Oh, I get that ally right now? Oh, I should not have played the Polyjuice then. Oh, but I might have needed for the attack. So it's all heroes choose one, gain two health, or search their discard pile for an ally and put it in their hand. I'll just grab the Dumbledore, it's fine. I could have done that way better. I'll just take this one, actually, because yep. I don't need two health, necessarily. Okay, I still have one more attack I'll put here. Uh, I have a heal of whatever, I'll just heal off this ability. Uh, Dumbledore, all heroes gain an attack, a money, a health. And draw a card. Oh, I need to shuffle. Yeah, I could have polyjuiced him. Oh, man. Yeah. I think I could have done that better. That's okay. I think... Definitely could have done that turn way more crazy, but it's okay. We're going to get to the guy that lets us not draw, so... Oh, before I played this guy, I still would have had enough, I think. No, I wouldn't have. Okay, never mind. Never mind. thought I would have had enough for buying this and getting my discard. Okay, draw a card. Okay, get some money. Okay, I'm gonna spend seven, but I'll throw all eight in there. She'll hurt me. Yeah, again, orders could have been done probably better. Uh, and that will get me this, and this will go here, and sure, my turn is done. Okay, let's do this first, which is just another butter beer. Okay, villain is each time that card is drawn or a new villain is revealed, all heroes lose one. So that'll be right now. New villain is revealed, so we will all lose one. Health. Health. Sorry, yeah. And then active hero reveals top card of his or her deck if the value is one or more. Discard it and add a control to location. Okie dokie. I think he's uh, the most important right turn. now. Okay. All heroes lose one and cannot draw extra cards this turn. Lose one health. Sorry. Okay. Oh, we can't draw cards this turn. That sucks. So you have to lose one. Lose one what? Health. Sorry. Oh, okay, thank Sorry. you. Uh, so let's. I'm gonna do th this for. Oh, can't draw, but I gain a one. I don't even need the one. Don't even need the one. So then, I'm useless this turn. Useless. Gain an attack. I'm gonna have a hundred dollars, and I'm not gonna be able to do anything with it. Uh, any. Two heroes gain one influence and one health. Gain influence and health. Uh, I gain influence and health? Yeah. Okay. Is it just me that can't draw? Reveal top. Something about oh, revealing top. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so I have guy. to... I didn't even do this. I'm so sorry. Active hero, lose top card. If it's one or more, discard it. And add a control to location. Sorry. Thank you, thank you. And then... That's fine. And that's fine. Okay. Thanks, Edgar. Thank you. Sorry. This gains me one, and I may put spells on the top of my deck. Cards. No, 
These are all just going to be useless. Can't draw a card. Gain two. Gain one. Gain one and gain one. Let's put two on. We're doing this guy first, right? I think so, Okay, yeah. two on that guy. Because he adds to their main victory condition, right? We're trying to stop them from winning the game. That's the most important resource they're trying to use to win. Yeah, I'll give But then you... again, secondary is damage because it could stun us and also add control. I'll give you one uh, influence. Okay. Oh, sorry. Let's actually rewind these two. We can't draw, but I'll discard these two. All heroes gain one influence. Maybe you can use it and draw a card, but we can't draw. Can't draw. Oh, whoops. Um, and then there's nothing I want for this. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. I don't think we need to worry about getting anything out this of This one does generate like two card draws, right? Any two heroes each gain uh, money and, and a card draw. So like this one does replace itself and draws the other player card. So okay, it's like, I mean, I can it's just the, the one I would say is the one, least two, garbage in there. One, two, three. So like four, it's, five. it doesn't like dilute your engine. It can actually help. She says I take if, damage. If uh, the other player. Yeah, I can play. Yeah, because at this point I'm just trying to help get yeah. combos going. But okay, and I'm not going to spend those. And it also gets okay. Arthur Weasley in the market. All heroes gain. Yeah, you're useless right now, buddy. Other than the fact you're an ally, but I would have bought that one if I just wanted more allies. But it is a Weasley. If you can get in your deck, then we can combo off our Weasleys. Yeah, but the, that I'm just gives kidding. more, do more just, um, know, influence, just which don't we don't do really That's need at this point. All right. I just wish I had more attack. More's more. Oh, no. All heroes lose a health. And then add a control to the location, please. And then that triggers this one. Each time Mo's Mordor, all heroes lose a health. Okay, active hero reveals the top card of his deck. Uh, it's a starter card, so I'm good, right? Yep. And then each time a hero acquires a card, okay. Oh, did you get the punishment for that? I did. Okay. Cool reds. So here's the problem. See, I got Polyjuice, no allies. So this is like the perfect way to break that. But mm -hmm. I also have this one, which... Could get me an ally that I could polyjuice. So I'm going to do this ability once per turn, discard an item to search your deck for a card of value of five or less. Uh, okay, so if I take this card out, this could draw me two cards. There's a chance I just grab an ally with it anyway, maybe even two, but there's a chance I could get these two. Do I play loose and greedy or do I just take this guy so I have an ally I can copy? He does heal three, that would be twice. Now, let's get greedy. I'm going to take this one and shuffle. Even though we're shuffling four cards. We are on game box shuffle. six. Yeah, we're playing game six. Game six. Yeah. I forgot, again, to leave it on the screen. So people can see as they come in to know. Uh, you shuffled? Okay. I uh, so I pick this one. Okay, then I'll play this one. Draw two cards. Double allies, double allies. Double yes! Yes! Yeah. yes. <laughs> Paid off. I'm a pro. I shuffled that good for you. <laughs> nice. All right. We got the juice combo. <laughs> All right. So in this case, since I think attack is more important, mm -hmm. I'm going to play this guy for two attack and one influence. And I will give him the juice. So I get two more attack and one influence. Okay, I'll play this guy, one attack, and anyone here can heal three. Uh, I'll just heal one, two, three. And then I gain three more influence. Okay. Mm. Don't think any of those cards I want, so it does not matter. And it stops me from getting bit by her. So he takes... Seven total, right? That's seven. Boom. All heroes may search their discard pile for a spell and put it in their hand and then remove one control from location. Right. I don't have a discard pile, but that's fine. Yeah, I don't care about it at this point. He just needs to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll take this spell. Yeah, see, I could have done this turn. I never read these and plan them into my turn. Uh, also, uh, you can heal too. Oh, thank you. From Ron Weasley's ability, right? We're allowed. And then this one, I'll grab an item from my discard pile and put it in my hand. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Why not one of these juicy seven costs? Yeah, if it's letting you have anything, that's so good. You're going to generate two attack and draw two cards. And I'll generate two more influence. There's a cycle through my deck. I love it. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then I'm going to literally, again, Rob's, Rob's lesson of playing deck building engine <laughs> games. You don't always have to spend your money late game. It actually will hurt you more than help you, depending on what's in the market and what your engine's looking like. And your attack. What do you want to do? Oh, with yeah. That? Attack. -os. We're going to get a second one of these guys shortly, I assume, as well. And if we're not buying cards, then Karen's not bad. Yeah, just spreading out, and then it gets all healed. It's like, yeah, feels but... like waste. Yeah, okay. Uh, discard, now I have to... Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. Reveal the villain. Reveal. Oh, it is the same. So, he's going to trigger each time a new villain is revealed. We all have to lose a health. Done. Okay, and then going here. Uh, active hero loses one health and cannot assign more than one damage to each villain this turn. That's fine, because I don't really uh, have... want to come up on my turn. Holy. Damage. There's probably another one of those in there coming and up. And I soon. can draw. Everything is good. Okay, so let's start with... Any two heroes each gain one influence and draw a card. Draw on a card, gain an influence. Gain an attack, myself, draw a card. Gain an attack, draw a card. Uh, discard two spells. Uh, all heroes gain one influence and draw a card. Any two heroes gain one influence and a health. I'm going to choose to draw a card. I'm going to choose to draw a card. I'm going to gain two influence. influence and if you play two or more spells, also gain an attack and a health. I'm going to gain a influence. Yeah, Dead Hand Design says, what if your engine is to spend money? And that's, we talked about that at the yes. start of the stream, too. Yes, if one player's job is to get a whole bunch of money and just buy a bunch of big cards, totally makes sense. It just depends on what you're doing. In this game, at this point, money is not what we're looking for. Yeah. But yes, at certain points in the game, or depending on your role as a player at the table in the engine building game, or if that's the victory points you need in the game and that's the engine you're working on, 100%. But I'm kind of doing generic engine building tips to help out a, a viewer, but also applying them to this game at the same time so sometimes it's you know you know what i mean like not valid but yeah and it's situational as well yes. yeah uh each hero gains one influence yeah it depends on the game of course you also gain influence yeah all right. and then i'll give you my influence from my ability all right perfect just what i needed and i put my damage on here I'll bribe and the villains i don't think i'm doing anything with this money so go ahead Game six is the two towers, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Hopefully I draw some end ally soon. All right, go ahead. Okay. So I have two polyjuices. If I can find Dumbledore, I am living the dream. But I can't search him out. Oh, only one damage, sorry. And I had three? Yeah. yeah so you spread so it I have up. to do one, two, three. Thank you, thank you. I forgot I had that. Thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to pitch this card so we both get to draw a card. Oh, you have to do your dark arts and everything. Oh, first. yeah, sorry. sorry. Wow. <laughs> We're getting thrown. Rushing ahead, sorry. rushing ahead. All heroes choose one. Discard an ally or lose two health. I will lose two health. I don't have an ally. Done. Lose two. Okay, this one, don't care. This one, don't care. This one, not yet. All right, back to Izu. <laughs> Pitching this one for my transconfiguration. So all, uh, if you discard this, all heroes draw a card. Ho, 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 ho. All right. Uh, I will search my discard pile for an item, put it into my hand. I'll play this card to draw two cards. Come on, Dumbledore. Damn it. I will generate two attack and draw two cards. Come on, oh man. God. You're killing me. <laughs> I don't want to double polyjuice Pidgey Widgeon. Ugh. Uh, oh, I didn't even do the search effect. Did I? I? I didn't even do this effect. Hold on. I gotta undo. 
I drew four of these, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, hold on. Rewind, rewind. So, sorry, rewind. I totally forgot to grab the card. I jumped ahead. Uh, five costs or less, right? Yeah. I'll just grab something that draws, probably, and then I'll shuffle, right? So, yeah. maybe Dumbledore will get to the top. Uh, I'll just get the crystal ball, I think. Yeah, let's just do the crystal ball. Help me draw. Yeah, oh, wow. I'm an idiot. So, I... So you'll get to draw I gotta draw four. these. Yeah, I gotta redraw four cards after also. Yeah, so here, you shuffle. I don't I want any shenanigans. Yes. Uh, I jumped, I skipped a step there. I was so excited to get it all going. Okay. So I draw two off this one after I got it back and replayed it. Okay. Then I drew two from this one. All right. I drew into draw. Beautiful. All right, I'm going to play this one. Draw two cards. Discard any one. Sure. This one, I'm going to gain two attack. Draw two cards. Oh my on, god, no! Dumbledore, you <laughs> stupid idiot. All right, maybe I can draw a card off this die, which we know is not going to happen. It's going to give you influence we don't need. There's one side with a card draw, right? I need one in six chance. Give me the card draw for Dumbledore. Nothing lets you draw a card. Hiya! Attack. No, attack. Okay, not bad. No, I want the Dumbledore double polyjuice combo. I know, I know. I bought too much crap in my deck. But does one of your allies let you draw? No. Oh, but lets you roll the die. Yeah, which is not draw. I guess I'll just work towards winning the game then. So <laughs> stupid. Serious Black. I will just double polyjuice Serious Black, I guess. So, four more attack. Two more influence. So lame. <laughs> oh, I get the attack. Sorry, sorry. I'm sleeping at the wheel here. Thank you. Uh, yeah, they are all players. I'm just sleeping. I'll just gain attack. Uh, for each ally, I played this turn. Uh, three. I get mesmerized sometimes by Rob's... Three more attack. Shenanigans. Okay. And then just four money. Uh, four money, yeah. Did you empty your whole bin? Four money. Two more, please. Thank you. <laughs> you emptied your whole bin. They didn't make these boards big enough to <laughs> hold all my riches. <laughs> Rob probably can kill everyone. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? You seeing what I can do? I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. Good thing I don't have the card that's telling me it can only put one damage on each villain. <laughs> Holy. That's what I'm saying. It's better that I draw that card. I don't do that much. All right. Well, I should look at what these do. Nothing really. No Just draw? heal okay. and give you more influence. These will remove tokens, which, yes, that's helpful. Okay. So I'll put four on this one to get rid of him. Okay. So all heroes gain one health. Yep. And then and remove, remove a control. A token. And then clear him. And this goes away. And do you have uh, stick more? Yep. Two, four, six, Boom. seven. Okay, all, all heroes can heal. And remove Get rid of that token. thing. And then four more. Four more. Yeah. And all right. One extra. Yeah. All heroes gain an influence. And two health. Health. And then I have two attack that I can't even spend. Oh, and then we're all full health, so this yeah. doesn't matter. Well, you're pro. Okay. Has a good turn. Wow. But now our no, can't draw villains coming up for sure. So all these shenanigans. So that's going to be our priority of who we need to kill first. Mm. Mm. No. Like I just want to buy an ally just to get or buy something just to see. Oh, we can't draw. Why? Oh. We can't. Oh, yeah. I can't draw. That'd be funny. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Oh, it will be. All right, so I'm drawing one, two, three, four up to shuffle. Okay. I think we have to reveal all the rest, so I'll just start this way. Draco, each time control is added to the location, active hero loses two health. Dumb and dumber, each time dark arts or villain causes the hero to discard a card, we have to lose one. And can't draw. And can't draw. Okay, he's, he's priority. And now him, we have to roll. Oh, this is not when revealed, so not yet. Yeah, it's just when you're okay. resolving, like, we'll do his, his first, first and, and these ones. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, you're good, and my you turn? you can't assign any damage to them until all these guys are defeated. Oh, that's fine. We got some weenies in front of him, which is kind of good. All right, what do we got here? Active hero loses three. One, two, three. Uh, does and stun me reveal another card. Active hero loses one health and discards a card. Lose a health. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't done cleaning up. Lose a health and discard a card. Oh, sorry. And I uh, forgot I left attack there that I couldn't discard even Discard a card. Okay. Uh, here, we're going to roll the green die. On influence, we're going to add a token control to the location. No! It's not the worst. Can't draw cards. Didn't, oh, this made me discard, so I have to lose a health. And then control, it was added, so I lose two more. Should be good. Okay. Don't then stunned. it can't draw, so we can remove a control <laughs> with that. I can't 20 says, don't the rules say to lay new villains from left to right when revealed? Does it matter, though? Does it matter? It might with positional, if there's positional villain abilities added oh. to the game later, but it doesn't matter in this case. There's nothing that changes that, right? Well, well it looks like that, so I don't know. It doesn't. I, it doesn't matter yet, but maybe there is like <laughs> stuff that's like, I, I can do. Yeah, like the villain to the left heals, and this guy does extra damage if he's beside that guy. If that's a thing, we're, we don't know that yet, so. Yes, but, sorry. Sure. But I, I fixed it now if that's a thing that might come up. Yeah. Um, Jacko says it matters to us. Okay, I have All fixed right. it for you. I have no fixed worries. it for you. I am going to <laughs> gain an attack, I think, with this. Oh, yeah. we, we need to try to get rid of this guy. I'm going to put my two attacks here. Kalipa, shove it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna gain one. I'm going to discard two. Uh, two spells. All heroes gain one influence, but we can't draw cards. We gain an influence. Influence. Can't, uh, can't... Also, Yogi states that we played it wrong then because we put them out wrong. We have to start the whole game over. Oh, okay. Let's yep. start all over. This game doesn't even count. Start yeah. over. Exactly. Goop. Goop. Oh. Do I buy a butterbeer just to see if there's something else fun in the deck, or are we fine? No, we're fine. Okay, then I do nothing with this. I was just hoping for something for attack for myself, like the um, Umbrella 2.0, but it's fine. But do you see, do you I know. see how many cards are left I know, now? I know. Do you One, see, two, three, four. And there's lots of garbage cards we didn't see early that we got lucky, so you'll just bring more of them. All right, go ahead. Massive asterisk. I know, right? We put the <laughs> enemies in the wrong locations. All right. Uh oh. Heir of Slytherin. Roll the Slytherin die. Uh, attack says all heroes lose a health. Oh, I'm down to two. Oh, I'm probably going to This be guy rolls a die. Boom. All, all heroes, heroes lose a health. health. Oh, my gosh, I'm down to one. Each time it's added? No, nope. not yet. Each time dark cards? Card? No. And I can't draw. draw extra cards. Okay. Well, good thing I didn't draw into many draw effects, only Dumbledore. So it's not the worst. I did put my attack here, so hopefully we can just get rid of that guy fast, and then we'll get our engines back. Okay. Is there a way I can get off damage in time? No. Six more? Six more. All I right. can generate three. I'm going to toss this, actually, and search my deck for a Card of five or less. We'll grab draw. If we do kill him, we also do get to draw, if that's helpful. I can copy. I can just polyjuice Dumbledore, at least for the other for the stuff. the other stuff, yeah. I mean, extra heal for me would be uh, awesome. Yeah, let's just get polyjuice going. That's fine. All right. Oh, you can't draw. Did you draw? No, I uh, searched my deck oh, okay. for a card. Okay. Oops, I didn't shuffle this. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm losing it. No, this wasn't draw specifically. Okay, you're good. All right, all heroes. Attack. Influence. Health. And no draw. Attack. Influence. Health. No draw. Attack. Anyone hero heals three. Go nuts. Thank you so much. Two influence. I have three. I will sign here. That will allow you to heal two more. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. I'm done. 
Gonna throw away all this money. Don't care. And to me? One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Active hero loses one health and reveals additional card. Active hero loses one health, reveals an additional card. Come on now. Active hero chooses another hero to lose two health and reveal additional cards. Sorry, oh, right. I forgot about all the ones that reveal extra cards. We haven't even seen any. Yeah, I've seen, so I've, like seen, I've seen them. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I've seen like three or four at one point. Good, good, good and combo. You have to lose two, though, for that. Two health? Yeah. Uh, all heroes lose one health and add a control to the location. Okay, I'm down to seven. Uh, one. And add a control to location, which triggers him to active hero loses two. Holy. I didn't discard and I can't draw. Okay, thank you for definitely, I would have been stunned. Definitely. You need three more so that my card draw uh, can go wild. Yeah, I can definitely do that. So I need to do it in... Wizard's gone wild next turn. This if, way. You, if you get there, that, that Baskalisk. I can't... Look, I have two right here. Gain one. Uh, no, we need three more, right? I think, sorry. Three, I said. Yeah. yeah. Five. Oh, now you have three. Now I have yeah, three. Perfect. And I can stop the trigger of something. Let's stop the trigger of this one. Oh, Voldy. Did you do this? Oh, I didn't do Voldy. You're right. Uh-oh. Oh, we both oh, lose one. Oh, no. I just looked at my row. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So. Or they're, they're saying nerf this guy, or is this guy still better? Oh, I can nerf that guy or if I'm allowed. Or is this still better? Oh, but this you're both guy I'm going to kill. Well, we can do that if I'm allowed to do that. Yeah, he's Choose a villain. a villain, yeah, until... Okay, he's blanks. He's a revealed villain, for sure. Okay, so let's spend three here, which will kill him. Boom. All heroes draw a card. Draw a card. And remove one control from the location. Done. Okay, now mine can also trigger. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, gain an attack, draw a card. Uh, let's do this one. Gain two influence. If you play two or more spells, also gain an attack and a health. Attack and a health. Uh, let's draw a card. Let's draw a card. I'm just trolling. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm just trolling. I'm like, are you trying to read something here? No. Uh... Gain one influence, and I can put spells on the top of my deck. Just 20. Wait, Voldy counts as an active in the pile? Does he? Or does he not? Well, I thought it's when he's revealed, like the last one. Like they're What does your card say that mutes? Choose a villain. What does the duct tape card say? Choose a villain. Choose a villain. Doesn't say until the start of your next turn, the villain's ability does not trigger. Yeah, I think he, that's why he's face up, right? Because the last and iteration the of him yeah. was when um, he show up? once like he's five? revealed. Yeah, I think it was five. Yeah, I think he's okay to do that. Yeah, in case it's, yeah, he's active as soon as you, I think it did say that too. Yeah, that's what I'm finding. I remember he read it, but that was like, you know, a week or so ago. With the uh, okay, he's placed on the bottom of the villain stack. Like other villains, his ability is active as soon as he's revealed. Like other villains, his ability is active as soon as he's revealed. Nope, this could force you to resolve the abilities of four villains in the turn. Yeah, you just can't assign damage to him. There's nothing stopping you from applying other card effects to him. Yeah, and this doesn't say it can't yep. be like the final boss. And he is, it says he's revealed, his ability is active. So that one just says slap it on a villain. I don't know. I don't see anything saying you can't do that, but it, there might be an FEQ entry that says you can't, but we, we don't care about that. Okay, gain two influence. Like, I don't see 20. I don't see anything stopping it, right? Yep. Uh, all heroes gain one influence. Oh, yep. And then you can gain an influence with my ability. You gain another one. Uh, another influence? Yep. Perfect. Just what Let's I needed. Put, I think Draco's, or he's worse, right? Don't care at this point. Just get through them so How we can fight can the bad do? bad guy. Just to remove somebody. I don't know yet. I'm going to be drawing cards oh, like crazy as long card. as I don't draw into a dark arts card that says I can't draw on the turn. Okay, let's These do... need to be shuffled then, right? Yeah, sorry. Let's do that. Hopefully and then don't. let's do nothing Hopefully. with this. I think we're fine at this point. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold I wasn't up. spending the money anyways. I'm going to discard these two spells. All heroes can gain one influence and draw a card. So I could have had one more. I'm not I'm surprised they didn't let me draw a card. And later. then it did nothing. Okay. That's it. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, sorry. 
Let's leave these in hand. All heroes lose a health, out of control to the location. Oh, so Draco will fire. I can get that on there. Which he says, the active hero loses two more health. Oh, I'm down to three just like that. Come on now. There we go. Okay, villain or dark arts event caused you to discard, and that didn't happen. I'm good to go. Yep. And he has two on them as well. This guy, if we do five damage, you can draw a card. Yeah, so that's the stuff I need to know before I start my turn that I always forget to look at. Yeah. Because I couldn't use that to like... Which really... I could have put these here is what I'm saying. Let's... I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Because yeah. likely you'd want to draw a card first. Anyways. Yes. And it's all likely. heroes. Likely. Likely. Well. I'll pitch this. Uh, if you discard this, all heroes draw a card. The so search in here for cards. Of five or less. Uh, item in my discard pile. Yeah, I'll take this spell. Shuffle. Okay. I will play this card. Uh, yo, gain two money or search your discard pile. For an item and put it in your hand. I'll just take the card, draw one. I'll play it, draw two cards. Yes, yes, my precious. Double precious. <laughs> All right, gain two attack. Draw two cards. Okay. Uh, need one more for this guy. Uh. I'll play the owl. In attack, I'll sign this attack. Okay, all, all heroes, heroes draw a card. Draw a card. I'll play this to draw Those. two cards and discard a card. So I get to draw one, but now I need to draw a second. So I will shuffle. <laughs> Man, if this game had trashing, I would literally, like I do in Star Realms, get a deck that literally draws out my whole deck every single turn. Mm -hmm. I'm almost there, but just the junk is too heavy. I need to clear. Oops. Oh, whoa. <laughs> whoa. what's he doing in there? He wants to be played. Yes, he does. Uh, I'm trying to shuffle a five card deck. This is ridiculous. All right. Uh, drawing one more from this, and then I have to discard a card. Oh, come on, Dumbledore. I will just discard, I guess, one of these. Yeah, I'll do one of those. Uh, then I'm going to play this card to generate two attack and draw two cards. Come on, you silly oh, wizard. Oh, you got him. Yes. You got him. All heroes gain an attack, a money, a health, and draw a card. And then he's thirsty for the juice. So you have here, double juice? Here's the juice, Gandalf. So attack, money, health, draw a card. And he's partying tonight. It's Saturday. Oh, yeah. It's Saturday. It so is he's, Saturday. He's, he's double fist in the juice. So attack. Attack. Health, money, card draw. Oh, one card. I almost have my whole deck being played this turn. No, Yogi, you need two beers. I mean, I still could draw one more card. It could happen. Okay, Weasley. Gain an attack. Uh, you have a Weasley in hand? No, no, probably not. Okay, I'm drawing a red. I don't know. Come on, give me the card draw. One in six no. chance. Card draw. Money. No. Womp, womp. Gain an attack. Anyone hero heals three. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, two attack. One influence. Uh, let's get some every flavor beans, gain an influence for each ally I played. One, two, three, four, five allies. That's five more attack. Gain an attack. If I defeat a villain, I can gain an influence. Perfect. That's what I needed. And then a whole bunch of junk influence for six.
So six has to go here first to start. Okay. Uh, Get out. Remove one location token. Okay. And then I don't know how much you have, but you have 15. Not, no, not 15. Oh, okay. No, no. I guess we can move them down now, right? I don't know if we're allowed. Is that in the rules? Is Well, I think that's where we put the damage. I think it goes in this space, though. Oh, yeah. I think. And I think it goes upside down. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, let's just troll everyone. Someone's slamming the thumbs down button. <laughs> how much you got here? Let's see. And then I'm going to heal myself off Ron's ability. Two, One, two, four, three. Six, eight, nine. Nine. So I need six damage. Well, luckily I have three right here. Thanks. Look at how many cards I just played on my turn, including oh, the one in my discard. Oh, I think I, I can do discarded. it. Oh, yeah. So I discard, I got to draw. Oh, yeah, all this money goes nowhere. Yeah. Feels so good to just take this much money. Like, it, when I first learned deck building games, this feels so wrong. And when you try to be efficient, like playing Euros and stuff, you want to use every resource. But in these engine building deck building games, like, oh, man, when they don't have the trash mechanic, it just makes me feel so good that I'm like, I'm generating that much money and I don't need it. Like, yeah. But I'm still wrecking the game other, in other aspects. In engines, it's good. All right. So good? Shuffle, yeah. You shuffle. I'm going to just draw this. Oh, we're going to roll the green die, because why not? Let's see what happens. We're going to draw a card. Yeah. Oh, no, we're not. Oh, here's the start of card. <laughs> 18 damage. That's how much it was, Velko. Oh, man. Uh, I'll just discard this one. Did you clear that at the start of your turn? Not yet. But now, I just do it now so I remember. That's so the start of your turn, Mel. Now I do this. So you have to discard a card once you draw your hand. Okay. And okay. then this is going to say, all heroes discard a card. So you're going to discard two uh, cards. I think I'll discard this one. Mm, I think I have no. this, but... No. But I'm going to just do it for fun. Cause... Serious black, I'll discard. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, all heroes draw a card. Okay. Uh, any two heroes each gain an influence and draw a card. I don't have any hand. This game, like, it definitely prolonged the game. Even though, like, we got a good engine going, I'm ripping through, like, three villains a turn. We're, like, three hours into the stream and we're only played one game. This is crazy. Remove a control token. I'm not complaining, like, it, it's been, like, the time flew. Yeah, it's been but, fun. Ah, uh, we're only streaming one today, I think, and we're not even done. Gain two influence. Yeah, that's crazy. I can also, because I played two spells, gain a attack and a health. We did side rant a little bit, but not too much. Gain an oh, attack. Oh, two cards. Sorry, sorry. Draw a card. Oh yeah. Two more cards after this card. Two total. Two total. Just that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Or was it before you let me draw a card? It was before, right? You should have four cards in hand. Yeah, I'll just get rid of this crystal. Well, yeah, whatever. I'll just get rid of it like that. Oh, you should actually, you should have revealed, discarded two. So you should have the back to your five. Because I let you draw two. But I don't know what I had in hand. I definitely had this guy in hand. And then you let me draw this. But I, I, you let me draw two. Yeah, I let you draw two and the game made you discard two. But when did it make me discard two? Before you let me draw two? Yes. So I think I would have to get rid of one of these. I'll just get rid of this one. That's fine. I think I can do yeah. this anyway. And then I drew into these two. I don't know. I don't know if you did this one now. To be fair, we talked for like an hour. That's true. Yeah, all the tips about the game and stuff. Yeah, that's true. Let's discard two spells. We both gain uh, influence and draw a card. Gain two influence. Gain an attack. And we both gain influence. Doesn't matter. But all we need is we have two, four, six, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. <laughs> we win. Boom. And I'll dump all Got this em. in the bin. Got him. We did it. Yeah, I had Polyjuice Dumbledore coming too. Oh, man. I would have been able to draw four more cards. Yeah, I would have had extra Polyjuice on Dumbledore. Oh, again? I think, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Double Polyjuice Dumbledore. One, two, two. Broken. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. Only bought 11 cards. That's not bad. And one of them I only bought because I wanted to see another card. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, yeah, that's a good idea. So a recap. Let's do a little recap based on the, the uh, how we were trying to explain how we approach these games and how we win more than we lose to help other people who are new to deck building or new to this game who maybe are struggling in some of the later years. Um, again, sometimes you can't help it. Sometimes things are out of control. Sometimes it depends on player count and who buys what cards and stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, just looking, yeah, I bought one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven cards oh, only. Oh, we both did eleven. Only bought eleven cards. Um, so our decks were literally like almost 50 50 craptastic beginning cards, but then also bought cards that worked well with the engine or abilities. Yep. And we really leaned hard into them. So I didn't go crazy on the allies because I didn't want to dilute my items. And since I had tutor, I was fine. I just wanted to be able to draw into my draw. So I could try to combo off polyjuices with my good allies. That's what I was trying to do. So if I pulled in more allies like these ones, yeah, I have more allies that help get more attack off my broom or bubblegum or whatever it was. But then these allies, like I never want to double their abilities or anything. They're just like, I'd rather not have that. I'd rather have my prime combo come up more often. If these allies had had attack instead of money generation, would you have been yes. different? Yeah. Yeah. Or card draw or die rolling that could lead into card draw. I would have gambled on them. But yeah, look at this. So it's like, here's the kind of cards I went for for my draw, ally, engine, combo thing I'm trying to go for. So, uh, you know, draw. Okay, a card that copies allies. I didn't even have the big ally when I bought the first one, but I had a decent ally that had attack. And uh, that was bought just to work with Sirius Black, at least. If not, even the attack on my owl minimum. Yeah. Um, would double the attack value. So in my mind, it's like still with something. And then, uh, yeah, just getting another Polyjuice later. And then, of course, like, man, these cards, holy. Yeah, those are good. But those uh, are Game 6 cards, so, yeah. yeah, those are great cards. Exactly. So, like, how I look at this is, like, yeah, you spend seven, I got lucky. We we scrounged and scraped so that we could get money enough to buy, like, a six-cost card super early. But it, it then snowballed into being able to generate more money on Mel's side to fuel me buying more expensive cards. Mm -hmm. And then her buying draw cards for both of us definitely helped my and when i didn't have draw at the start of my turn got my draw engine kick started so i drew into more draw right um, yeah because being able to start your turn with more than five cards yeah. is helpful and again in this more game options. because there's no trash mechanic draws value is like doubled because then you have to draw through the garbage uh because you can't get rid of it out of your deck so that's why i go i'll never stop getting draw cards and then these allies like so i kept it super simple like um, and then a card to get items back, like, so I could draw even more. So, like, I kind of always had a trick to just draw. Even if I had a whole end of no draw cards, I could still get the draw going at some point. Um, even with this one, like, this this card was my, like, get out of jail card to get a card to start the card draw engine also. Like, yeah, yeah these kind of cards, like, wow. Like, pitching a card to search for cards? <laughs> And I was just looking at mine. I did buy a couple items, and the items that I bought were mainly because they worked with spells. So because I played spells, I would get heal and attack. The, the, this let me draw, and this gave me some heal. But then right. I bought majority of spells, and the spells were to gain some attack, draw cards. Obviously, this is so good. That blanks one of the abilities. Um, all heroes draw, and then remove control from the location. So I kind of went a little more spell-heavy and tried to be more like supporty, right? Helping generate cards for Rob, mm -hmm. uh, influence for Rob to be able to buy cards, being able to myself do a little bit of damage. But again, I only had like maybe four damage cards and they all only did one. So I couldn't do a ton of damage, but uh, Rob being able to give me damage as well on my turn, I'll just help. So Jacko says, Rob, were you ripping on Polyjuice the stream before last? Haha. <laughs> yes, I was. But this was you guys saying Polyjuice was so good based on other knowledge of other allies and things coming into the game. Obviously with Dumbledore, it's broken. Obviously when I see Sirius Black and he's got two attack and I can make it four attack, awesome. But early in the game, some of the allies we saw, some of the allies that were added to the game, some of them that showed up in the market, some that are my deck, I don't care about duping them. I, I didn't care about duping them. I was more trying to use allies just to generate attack off my broom or whatever kind of thing. But uh, now that we've seen some better allies and I can consistently get them, then Polyjuice goes through the roof. So the only reason I valued Polyjuice right there is because I saw Sirius Black. And then obviously when I saw Dumbledore show up, then like Polyjuice like, okay. Yeah. Like you have an eight cost card, you're playing three times on the turn. 
then Polyjuice is amazing. So I know some of you are like, oh, Polyjuice is amazing because you played a lot of the game or you've seen all the cards. Um, but at the time with the knowledge I had, Polyjuice wasn't that bananas. Unless I have a whole bunch of allies that I care about duping. But when I have allies that just generate like two money in late game, like I don't care about duping their ability, right? Um, but it depends. It depends what you have. Like it, it, it's all situational. And no matter what shows up, uh, or based on what shows up, it totally changes the value of cards. Like I said, you can't just blanket statement, this card is amazing. Because cards are could be more amazing early game, late game, based on your engine, based on the other player's engines, based on the villains that are out, based on what you're doing, you know, based on the count of cards already in your deck, or the value, the, the efficiency, um, and the value of each individual card already in your deck could change the value of other cards on the table. Also, in the turn that you weren't allowed to draw cards, it wasn't as good because you didn't have that big, huge flood of cards that you can then hopefully dupe an ally. Yeah. So there is times where that card's not going to do anything. And also, Polyjuice went up, and I valued it high this turn. Let's not forget about this. Oh, yeah. Because it was an item that worked with this, and if I saw it, it takes away the downside of it. Because if I see it and I have this card and I don't have any allies, that the real negative of Polyjuice that I complained about before was, on, and I had a few turns this time where I drew Polyjuice and no allies. Right. But this card fixed it. This card basically broke Polyjuice for me. So please understand, I'm valuing and talking highly about Polyjuice based on all the situation that happened now, which we didn't have access to these before. So if that makes sense, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So yes, I still stand by what I said. Yeah, I still stand by what I said for sure. Uh, would you have got the roll dice cards to roll the draw dice if the draw cards weren't there? I may have. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's I may possible. Have. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, and I would have picked the die rolling one. Yeah, the absolutely. The one that let you draw cards or the attack one, yep. depending on the situation we were in. If, at the, if time. the draw card stuff wasn't there, we had two cards that were like draw cards are off the beginning. If we saw two of those books that that make you roll the die, and may, or maybe an ally that rolls a die in a book. Yeah, I might have taken the ability that gets them cheaper and lets me reroll. Yeah. And then maybe try to get into that. That could be definitely a valid play for sure. Because I think in, in in game five, we did roll the die a lot more with our cards, right? You had the Weasleys and I had Weasleys going and we were, yeah, we were rolling the die a lot more. Yeah, the book. Because then I could get this for three only. And then every time I, I choose the die I want to roll, which should probably be the draw card die, and then I get to reroll it. And there's 50 50% 50 chance to get the dice, uh, the draw cards, right? Yeah. And because it affects everyone at the table, I also think those oh, ones yeah, are yeah. a lot better when you're playing with more characters. If you're playing with four people and you're rolling that die and everybody's getting the benefit from it, I but think that's th pretty good. Then everyone's still getting hit with all the hit all player True. stuff too. So True. it kind of balances out. Uh, but yeah, I saw there was comments like Yogi was saying, uh, you know, it looked like we broke the game there, which we did. It doesn't always happen that way. And Yogi was making jokes that like the game wasn't designed to be played by someone who came from like Arkham Horror, Marvel LCG, Game of Thrones, a card game, whatever, all the LCGs playing like competitive card games and stuff, uh, and cooperative card games. But uh, I don't know if there's much engine building in those. I, I think more of the, the I, I think those games are inaccurate. Yes, you want to put efficient decks together and yes, Playing the combos deck. And combos, knowing when to play what, yeah. Yes. Valuing cards that you want to put in your deck. Of course, that yes. comes from those games too. But it comes from literally uh, to understand where my engine building and deck building foundation and, and what games I played and shaped me as a player for how I look at games like this is um, probably Scythe. That was the first one where I, like, it actually said engine building on the box, basically, and I went, oh, I want to try an engine builder. Mm -hmm. That game I fell in love with, and just, I can never not, play, I can never play enough of that game. I don't play it enough to know all the super broken strategies and stuff. I don't ever really want to know those, um, and how imbalanced the game can be, but I just love playing that with a group of friends we play with, and just have a good time, or play it online, even on the computer. I haven't played in a while, though, but I, I've been getting the itch to play it lately, very much so. Scythe shaped my engine building. Star Realms, Hero Realms, I've probably played hundreds of each of those games. Mm -hmm. And Star Realms, probably, like, over 500 games, probably. We used to play tournaments at our oh, house. We so have, fun. like, 20 people come over and do Star Realms tournaments, set up a bunch of foldable tables, do tournaments, give away prizes. Just because like anyone can play that game and be, learn that game even the same day. Mm -hmm. So I could just be like, hey, bring a friend. They can play too. And we just used to run 
tournaments of Star Realms at her house, uh, just getting competitive, but still casual. And uh, I played so much digitally on my phone. Oh, man, if you had the phone playthroughs of oh, Star yeah. Realms. I used to play the app on my phone all the time, lunch break, in the, in the office, doing my other business. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that was a game I played a long time ago. Um, I would probably add Aeon's End a little bit as well. Aeon's End definitely have shaped that, all the stuff we learned from... Um, is it Ron? I think it's Ron who comments on our Aeon's Ends, who watches them later because the internet's not that great. He would comment and give us strategies and experiences with his group on how he played cards and combos and the roles and engine of each player being separate in that game. I think, and I think too for me, Aeon's End was what kind of made me look at the cooperative deck building, right? Like yeah. Star Realms and all of that are like 1v1, but the Aeon's End really brought into like the working together yep. and playing your roles and you're using your abilities to your advantage help yep. a team and uh what other games that's probably it that's probably it that i consider the main ones that where i like the light bulb went off so yeah aeons and star realm slash hero realms scythe those were like when i was new and all that changed me from being like i don't know what i'm doing in these games to like i get it mm -hmm. and of course the competitive card gaming background i have of you know Tweaking cards, changing cards, how much cards or how many types of cards, how big your deck should be, how, the odds of drawing cards, stuff like that. An engine, like making sure as you draw cards, you draw into stuff that's actually useful, dead cards, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Definitely, definitely helped me value each piece of paper in your deck and how to value it for sure. Um, but of course, other games after that I played, but by then I'd already understood that stuff. But those were the ones that like kind of the light bulb went off that, that, that made me like, oh, I get it. I get it. Arkham. Yeah, Arkham the Living Card Game. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we have played it. Yes, we played Arkham Horror the Living Card Game. We played through almost every campaign except for a couple of Dream Eaters and the Innsmouth one. Um, but we played through the blind on the channel. We're not super serious with that game. All the LCGs have kind of gone to being a casual player. We kind of pull them out a couple times a year and play them. Because mm -hmm. um, I love playing every single one of them for different reasons. And I can't just focus on one. There's many other channels and podcasts out there that just pick one and focus on it that you can go there to find that. But I still enjoy them enough to play them and show them off to people and hopefully like introduce them to people who maybe are interested in getting into a lifestyle game. That Literally, you could like eat up all your hobby gaming time with that one game. Um, but yeah, we play uh, Lord of the Rings Living Card Game here, Marvel Champions Living Card Game, and Arkham Horror Living Card Game uh, each a couple times a year at least, yep. especially when campaign boxes come out. We get drawn to them because we love playing campaign style games. Um, you know, learn a game once and have it evolve and tell a story or... Yeah, we love that. Yeah, I like playing games more than I like learning games. Same. So that's why I like playing through entire campaigns or at least playing a game more than once or trying different strategies or trying different characters or streaming it more than one time. Like, that's that's me. That's Rob. That's what I like doing. Well, don't you feel like you get your more of your time for the learning back? Like all yes. that time you spend in learning the it, the more yeah. you play, you feel like, okay, yeah, I've invested time to learn this game, which was a challenge. Not and... to mention the money. Like yeah. we buy a game like this, like how many hours have we spent with this on the table, learning it, practicing it on the stream, off the stream. We're going to play this with our daughter all the way through after we're done it. Bring it to friends' houses, probably give it away to our friends after we play through the expansions and stuff. Mm -hmm. This game, like, literally we spent whatever it was. I don't even remember. Um, I don't think it was more than 50 US dollars, is it? Or maybe something around know. that? I don't know. We bought it a while ago at our local game store. One of, not even our local game store. Uh, our friend's local oh, game yeah. store in his city. But, um, yeah, we've definitely got our money's worth out of this, even if we stop now and never play it again. But we definitely will play another stream of this, because we have to play game seven. So game seven will be in another stream. Stay tuned to the channel. Hit subscribe. Turn on the notification bell. Check your subscription feed. Eventually it will pop up on the channel within the next week um, where we'll play the final game seven. And again, before the stream today, based on uh, the likes you guys have been clicking lately on the previous videos, the watch minutes, the sharing them, the viewing them, uh, people asking, the price, the support we've been getting on the channel, the super chats, the people clicking the join button down below and supporting us. We appreciate it. Uh, we brought we bought the two expansions for this game. Even though some people said one of them is very underwhelming, 
we still bought them. We're still going to play them. We'll still suffer through if, if we have to. Um, so I purchased those this morning. They will show up hopefully uh, tomorrow or the next day. Next day, probably. Yeah, we're not canceling after this. I still had fun with this one. Yes, I had fun with this one, but it's because we won. And we know it doesn't always work that way because there's, there's a lot of randomness to this game. There is some luck element to it that can just uh, mess with you. Like the way the villains come out even could just like literally block you. Right. Um, if you get unlucky. We, we didn't see the guy that blocked card draw until the very end of the game. I find that totally based on my play style will be the, the difference maker, whether I'm allowed to go wild or not. Um, but yeah. So stay tuned. We're definitely playing more Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle on the channel. Uh, tomorrow, again, a reminder, we are hosting a Gen Con Q&A planning discussion stream. The first of three we're going to do this year before Gen Con. So if you want to... If you are thinking about going to Gen Con... In Indianapolis, North America's biggest tabletop gaming convention, if you're interested in that, and you want to know about badges, hotels, things that go on there, if you have any other questions I'm not thinking of, we're going to mainly cover badges and booking hotels. But if you have questions about event system, uh, traveling to there, want to hear our stories about it, we're going to, it's just an information kind of, you know, discuss it. We did it last year, but we did it too close to the convention we were asked to do it. And we were like, yeah, it would make more sense if we started doing it like earlier in the year when badges go on sale. So badges have gone on sale, but you don't need to rush for them. But if you're interested and want to know about it, we can, we're going to talk about it on stream tomorrow. Um, and I know there's some people in our community who are going and probably have questions. So I know Matthew does. So bring them tomorrow. I know it doesn't apply to everybody. It's a very niche stream. Not everyone cares about Gen Con, especially if you don't plan on ever traveling to Indianapolis, Indiana. But there is Gen Con online where you can get involved in events and, and be part of it. Um, we will be there probably, knock on wood, uh, covering it. We'll be streaming from there if we can again, like last year. Uh, we'll be meeting with publishers, fans of the channel, playing games, demoing stuff, buying games to bring back, getting review copies from publishers, even maybe some exclusive behind closed doors demos that we can stream like we did last time. I don't know if we were allowed to, but they let us, so we did it. We do not get a booth, no. No, no. No, yeah, come we're just on, like man. you guys. We want to go walk okay, uh, around. I know there's a lot of names <laughs> scrolling by there, but if you add up all the money we get from those people, and I do this full time, uh, we only have so much of a budget, okay? Uh, yeah. Affording we don't have booth con, budget money. Yeah, affording a Gen Con <laughs> booth, like they're expensive. Most large publishers go there and they don't even break even on the amount of sales they do versus the cost of a booth at Gen Con. It's a big deal to get a booth there. Mm -hmm. No, we will just be there. And in uh, some of the evenings, maybe we'll meet up. Um, but we'll talk about more of that tomorrow um, during the stream. But yeah, no, 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 no. Um, so yeah. And we'll talk more too on stream tomorrow about our community members, those who support the channel, name scrolling by there. Um, how if you are going to the convention, how we can stay in touch while we're there and play and meetups on the fly, show each other games that we've seen, demos we tried, you know. You can't see everything at Gen Con. You can't do all the events. You can't see all the booths. And you can't play all the demos of games. You can't buy all the games there. It's impossible to do everything at Gen Con in the four days of Gen Con. But the beauty is if there's a whole bunch of us there and we're all staying in touch on Discord, sharing things we played, things we saw, things we bought, deals we found, uh, hopefully we can help you, uh, us get the best, best Gen Con and find all the goodies. Because, like, man, if there's some crazy dungeon crawling fantasy game that, like, I totally walked by and missed because there was a, a crowd in front of it, and I don't walk down that aisle again for the rest of the convention, I'll feel very sad if I miss that stuff. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we can all help each other out with that stuff too. So it's pretty fun. Um, but yeah, the meetup it just would be like a casual kind of thing in one of the evenings after the dealer hall closes. We usually mosey on into the game gaming area that's open all night. Um, and we kind of just find a table, sit down, relax. Sometimes we're drooling and our brains are dead by that point. Probably run a little stream, recapping our day. Maybe play a game or two with people. Maybe just chat and hang out. Maybe eat. I think you eat sometimes when you're there, if I remember. Yeah, sometimes. I think sometimes you eat. And then we'll go home and go back to the hotel and sleep. Um, but yeah, we're not scheduling a meetup. We might. Maybe. I don't know. I know you can schedule events. Like, we can get a room and everything. I know we can do that. Mm -hmm. Just schedule a room to do a meetup. Like, you know, a one hour kind of like everyone come to this room and we'll hang out. But... Then you got to like worry about ticketing and all that stuff. And I got to follow rules and things. I, nah. Too much planning for me. I like to do stuff on, on the fly. Um, 
and I would hate to schedule that meetup and then a publisher be like, hey, we have an opening. Right. Do you want to come and check out this game privately after the con in the evening? And I'm like, I can't. I have this meeting. And, you know, I, I would rather do that meeting, stay open and loose, and then meet with everyone after it or something casually. Yeah, we'll talk about that tomorrow. But again, we're going to do three streams talking about the Gen Con stuff. So as we get closer to the event system, we'll do another one. And as we get closer to Gen Con, we'll do another one. And then we can kind of talk about more of the plans by then. Right. Right now, it's just like you need to start thinking about badges, if you, especially if you want to get a hotel room. And we'll talk more about that tomorrow. Uh, but yes, if you want more deck building on the channel, again, we're going to be playing more Harry Potter. Uh, this, expansions, deck building games. Of course, you have plenty if you're interested. Engine building games, love all that stuff. Stay tuned to the channel. Um, and again, Thunderstone Quest. At some point, we'll play that, which we were told during these streams we should check out. So we're definitely going to check that out. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for supporting the channel. Um, and I guess we'll see you in the next live stream. Bye. Bye-bye.